group behind the petition drive has said they're prepared to take the battle to court if the city council does not comply. Mayor Bill de Blasio has previously called the measure inappropriate, very insensitive. In addition to creating a Twitter account, Pope Benedict XVI plans to further connect with Christian youth by giving up on Catholicism. Quote, in order to really relate to modern teens, he needs to make religion a much smaller part of his busy life, just like they do. And it's already working. Tweets like, can someone go to church for me, LOL, hashtag sleeping in, have been retweeted over a million times by lazy Catholic teens, while tweets like, if God was real, how come there's so much murder, and I'm still Catholic, I just don't go to church or believe in Jesus have been especially successful with college students who are questioning the church's teaching. It's really cool to see that the Pope is as active on social media and as skeptical about God as I am. Look, he just tweeted, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's totally how I feel. Pope Benedict's aides say his next project involves reaching out to Muslims by sitting down with Islamic leaders and proclaiming his undying allegiance to Allah. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the website. Those other talk show hosts will charge you for their sites. And that's sometimes like... Seven, eight bucks a month. We do it for free, so go and enjoy. You can actually create the content that you see on the front page of the site. All the numbered items as you scroll down, those were all put there by listeners just like you. So you can get interactive at freetalklive.com. Got an update uh, for you here. Actually, a couple updates tonight. One of them on the Silk Road case. There's been a, a new development the legal struggle, the legal saga of one Ross Ulbricht, a.k.a. maybe Dread Pirate Roberts, uh, the guy who was allegedly the creator of the Silk Road, an underground drug marketplace, basically, a free, kind of like a free marketplace, although not entirely. There were certain things that could not be sold on the Silk Road. Anyway, we can talk more about that. There's been an interesting development there with an, a motion filed by Ulbricht's attorney. We'll tell you more about the thrust of that. Also, I have a pair of letters that I, I want to share tonight. Uh, Derek J. and Mark joining me here. I'm Ian. And uh, w w the letters are about the Free State Project. And one of them is entitled Free Staters, Part of New Hampshire Tradition. The other is entitled I'm a Lover, Not a Hater. Wow. And one of them is written by somebody. But he sounds who, a lot like a hater. <laughs> yes. One of them is written by somebody who I would consider to be a hater. Uh, the other is written by somebody who obviously thinks that free staters are a welcome, natural uh, extension of what New Hampshire is all about. So kind of a study in contrast between people in New Hampshire and how they perceive this interesting movement that uh, the three of us are part of, the, the Free State Project. The idea of focusing liberty-loving activists to have them move all in one area or to one area, one geographic area. And New Hampshire was that choice. So we'll uh, we'll share that on the way here. Derek J literally just rolled in. Uh, so I don't know what he's brought to uh, to the table tonight. Derek, anything uh, hot on your plate? Uh, I'm always focused on uh, stories of peaceful resistance. So I'll bring you something in that vein. Looking forward to it from peacenewsnow.com. Derek J joining us here tonight. It's been a, a pretty busy day, a busy week uh, here in Keene, New Hampshire, as always. Uh, of course, I just got back from doing fair outreach reach, which I've talked about to some extent on the show, but I haven't done a recap uh, of what happened over the last week. And so I uh, just want to do that real quick here because the fair, the county fair here in Cheshire County was a great and amazing outreach experience uh, this weekend. And that's because we were able to give out over 500 Bitcoin flyers in the five days of the fair. In the last two days, it was like 200 flyers a day, basically. So we probably hit five, 550, 600 flyers 
uh, over the uh, the full five days. I don't have an exact count because we went with a fairly large stack of fancy color like cardstock flyers, and we burned through those by Friday uh, evening. I printed out 400 more at that point. Got got on Staples website and did a rush order so I could pick it up the next morning. Uh, 400 more flyers. So I know that number, and we burned through all 400 of those in 48 hours. That's so amazing because New Hampshire is already one of those Bitcoin meccas where you know there's some of the largest meetup groups, some of the most uh, items that are ordered online through mm-hmm. Bitcoin are shipped to New Hampshire. So you're doing an awesome thing by helping the mecca grow. Well, you know, I, and it's it was kind of discouraging at some points because we're at a county fair where surprisingly there's not a lot of people who have internet access maybe like half the crowd that we talked to uh didn't have internet access i don't know okay so (laughs) one of the things that you can if you were out there trying to get email addresses Mm -hmm. you would find a lot of people that would say i don't have no email address yeah but they have an email address they're just not going to give it to you i mean these are people living out in the woods they're farmers maybe they're totally fine with their lifestyle without internet i live next to Two farmers um, on either side, and I'm mm-hmm. a farmer myself. Uh, I've got there's four people that sort of live in the immediate, uh, immediately adjacent areas, and I can tell you that a hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of another neighbor too. One hundred percent of the four neighbors that I can think of, these are the households have internet, and mine too. Mm-hmm. Sure. No, I get where you're coming from. Um, I just I, I believed him. I, I get where you're saying. You're saying people are lying. Okay. And so here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Some of the people. That we're talking to you, and they're not Some lying. Some people would lie. It's sure. just none of your damn business, okay? Well, no, hold on a second. If you answer a question with something that's not the truth, that's generally a lie. I, I disagree. Mean, um, if a uh, police officer, um, you know, or a government agent asks you something that could in- could cause you to incriminate yourself, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, you have the ability to lie. Oh, I'm not saying on, it's Ian's wrong. Not a police officer. He's just I understand. I'm just saying that look, whoa, 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 when, whoa, when somebody whoa, asks I... you something that's none of their business, at that point, I think we're talking about an entirely different realm of untruth. I don't know. Okay. It's like strategic if, if... disinformation. Different than alive. It's like if if I was at uh, I used to work at JC Penny and if I was like oh hey can I help you with that or do you do you want some help picking out a tux like if someone said no but they they really wanted help I mean I don't know people lie people about weird. small stuff all the time they're still lies I, I think- try to change the the terminology behind a lie sounds really slimy to me Mark so right. why not just embrace it yes it's a lie but then just add the caveat that in all circumstances lying is not wrong if you're lying to protect your family from getting sh- uh, hacked up by a man with a machete trying to break into your house uh, in the middle of the uh, the night or if you're lying to the police to stop them from you know putting your friend in a, uh, a cage then you know there's there's nothing wrong with lying in the instance if so. that's the way you want to go with it i believe that there need to be different terms mm-hmm. for different sorts of things well and they're that- not spreading misinformation which is usually the other thing that people can do when it seems like they're lying like if they've been lied to and they don't know that it's a lie it can sound like a lie if they're passing well, on misinformation. now you have just two definitions of what uh, you know, an untruth is i called it a strategic strategic disinformation yeah. and i think that that's very specific it is dealing it's with things a longer way of saying lie Sure. Uh, a lie is a larger umbrella, okay? I prefer to use the umbrella of untruth and that lie is a specific thing. You need thing. to be a politician, Mark. Doesn't he, he sound like a politician He's really mincing words, yeah. yeah. And uh, to the first point, I think a lot of these people don't have internet. That's what we were talking about yes. in the first place. I think they weren't lying. They were just straight up they being honest. They are salt of the earth. Hey, we you don't think have every internet. one of those people that he talked to was telling the truth? There was not. Well, when, not everyone. When every people say, them. I don't have internet, I tend to believe them. Like, that's that's a pretty serious cl- I would be embarrassed to say those words if, if I uh, right. it was know, either they, utter them. It was either they did not have it at all or they hardly ever ha- got on you know they had no drive whatsoever to uh, to access it and and i believe it we're out in the middle of the woods at a county fair it's going to be a place that is likely to attract the light uh, the luddite likely to attract somebody who is not really a big fan of technology i mean this isn't a high-tech event <laughs> we're talking about tractor pulls here 
Uh, so those uh, pigs. The, <laughs> there were any horses. Pigs. There were no pigs. But what are you the, talking about? There was like a pig scramble at some point. Well, yeah, they understand. just have the pigs for the pig scramble, but they don't have four uh, H pigs uh, at that particular Whatever. event. There was I understand. Animals. You didn't go there through and look at too. all the beautiful uh, farm animals. No, I try to stay away. They time. stink. <laughs> right? I understand. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a farmer. That's why uh, you're not person. really. You know, you're really in the wrong place. This is you. No, talking it was about actually a, very, really the a nice place to be, and that's why I was saying it was. It could be a little discouraging at times, but overall. The event was very, very successful. I handed out, and uh, you know, myself, Chris Cantwell, and several other activists total handed out over 500 Bitcoin flyers, and I considered that to be a very good result. And it is the right place. Farmers are a great demographic for using Bitcoin. Not and, if they don't have the internet. There. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but there's hard, there's like hardware wallets now that b uh, farmers could use Bitcoin. Well, again, if it doesn't assist in their lifestyle, if they can't see a benefit to it, and if they're not online, they'll never see a benefit to it. It just it means nothing. Bitcoin to them is it is meaningless, and it that's could, okay. It could mean as much as gold and silver. Like, and farmers get that. They trade in alternative currencies all the time. By here's mm -hmm. some milk, here's some eggs, here's some carrots. We we trade in alternative currencies all the time. So it was a great event. I mean, despite the people that didn't have right. uh, internet access or claimed to not have internet access. I thought it went pretty well. Now, of course, I don't have anything to compare it to. I haven't done, you know, another county fair somewhere else doing Bitcoin. But it's not my job to go outside of this county. So uh, what about you? What, are you and your activist buddies doing outreach uh, where you live? If not, maybe you should look at the Free State Project and move to where there are enough activists to actually put together something like this. Because I couldn't have done this alone. Uh, there's more coming up here in moments. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Talk Live. The DEA doesn't dabble with users. They go after the big dogs. Yeah, and I'm certain they have dabbled with users, and they would if they thought they, they could the get DEA? something. The DEA? They would if they thought they could get somewhere with it. Maybe but a user who's snorting three pounds a, a week, something where they could actually connect to a, a player. Yeah. But most users are just buying from other users. I mean, in the cocaine world, when you are uh, a user, you've got to support your habits somehow. Right. And if you're not willing to go and knock over convenience stores and break into people's cars and hurt people to get the cash for your habit, then the only other choice for you, if you're not wealthy, is to sell cocaine to others. Right. And so most people will go and pick up whatever amount of coke they uh, they do, and then they'll sell to certain specific people who are their friends. Like he was saying, he was selling to his neighbor across the street. The DEA is not going to mess with that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I was kind of just recapping some of the things that have gone on here in our beautiful little Keene, New Hampshire, uh, with Free State Project participants and other liberty activists getting out there and getting the word out about Bitcoin. In fact, I've talked to multiple people when I was at the, the outreach booth that I had set up over the last several days uh, five days straight is uh, what the county fair runs here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire. And I recommended Express Coin a bunch of times because when I would actually get into conversations with people, you know, there's different levels of interaction. So the you know kind of the basic level of interaction is handing someone a flyer, and then somebody who's more interested, you know, answering some of their questions about Bitcoin. And of course, one of the questions is, how do I get them? Well, I had a Bitcoin vending machine right there, but kind of the holy grail of this outreach booth is to get somebody to get a Bitcoin wallet on their smartphone and buy Bitcoins from the Bitcoin vending machine, which is a very difficult task. So only did that a few times over the five days. But some people were still interested enough to kind of ask about it. They wanted to do their own research. Not everybody's comfortable with just pulling out their wallet and putting money into a strange machine on the side of the the county fair. Um, But ExpressCoin.com is a way for people to get uh, get Bitcoin, as well as Dogecoin, uh, Dogecoin, which, by the way, was the second most popular currency, cryptocurrency, at least by mention of the people who came by the booth. Really? I, it was mentioned three times by three different people, just randomly. Like, you know, I was just talking to them, just kind of pitching Bitcoin out to them, and then they would say something like, do you have Dogecoin? Or some sort of Dogecoin-related comment. Wow. Um, yeah, and those people with the Dogecoin weren't really interested in Bitcoin either, which was kind of weird. That's what's so cool <laughs> about Dogecoin that I've noticed. It sort of brings people to the idea of cryptocurrency, sometimes without even noticing that Bitcoin exists. Like, uh, there's a Dogecoin conference or Dogecon that happened <laughs> out uh, in California. That sounds like it'd be fun to attend. Oh, yeah. I was uh, th- th- read some of the reports uh, about it. It, okay. was, it was a blast. <laughs> the pizza and stuff. Um, but... That's what the, these people were into. They didn't care about Bitcoin, mm. some of them. And that's really cool that there are so many different cryptocurrencies now that people can have their own niche and not even care about some of the others. You like can, the leaders, like Bitcoin. You can get Dogecoin and Bitcoin. And also now Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin, all with uh, very easy methods like money order, check, wire transfer, cash deposit. Uh, at a uh, credit union with shared branching. ExpressCoin.com makes it possible, and they make it possible at a very low rate. It's like a 3% transfer fee for orders over $40. Now, if you can use code FTL if you're ordering less than $40 worth of Bitcoin uh, over at ExpressCoin.com, and you'll get it for no transfer fee, which is a great way to just go and get some Bitcoin for the first time. Uh, because if you were to buy it from the machine on the side of the fair, that's a 5% fee. And if you're going to buy less than $40 worth or even more than $40 worth, I don't think you can find a better deal than ExpressCoin.com. I really don't think it's possible. So go and check it out. It's great stuff, and they'll get you your Bitcoin lickety-split. Usually it takes about a bit business day, uh, from what I understand. 
So we continue here. Uh, a little bit more about the Free State Project. Uh, one letter to the editor from a hater, somebody who hates the idea of the Free State Project, and a letter from somebody who thinks it's a great idea, both people living in New Hampshire. We'll get to that here in a moment. But I have to say, the haters were uh, non-present at uh, the county fair for the most part. There was one guy who walked by and just started laughing at us, and I kind of asked him, Hey, what's you know, like to be on in on the joke? What's what's so funny? And he just kind of looked at us and just kind of kept laughing at us. He said something derisive or just sort of blowing us off. Like but, your presence uh, there was the the funny thing that was making him something laugh. Something like that. Yeah, he wouldn't really get uh, explicit, and he just kept walking, uh, which is fine with me. And then there was you know somebody else who heckled us at the very end of the day on Sunday. But compared to previous years, I mean, I I remember when. You know, people would say nasty things as they walked by, and I kind of expected that to happen this year. It really, it really didn't transpire at all. I That's mean, it cool. Didn't happen a lot previously, but it happened enough to kind of be like, hmm, oh, well, third year, you're old hat at this. Well, right, and I am kind of old hat at this, uh, Derek J. I've been doing uh, fair outreach booths for more than a decade. I because uh, for other causes, right? In the uh, in Florida is when I got my start doing them. I did them at uh, county fairs down in Sarasota. I did gun shows. And gay and lesbian pride fest. Cool. So it's kind of like you all know, for all the Libertarian Party of uh, Sarasota. Um, initially for the Libertarian Party uh, in Florida, and then after I joined the Free State Project, I shifted the focus of the booth to the Free State Project rather than the Libertarian Party because the Free State Project actually, you know, seemed like a good idea, and the Libertarian Party wasn't going anywhere at all. And then when I moved to New Hampshire, I wasn't able to afford uh, to do. A booth right out the gate, so it took me a, a few years to kind of get organized and get things together. But I'm I'm glad to be back out and doing it. Uh, yesterday, in particular, was amazing. Sundays previously it was the last day of the fair. Sundays previously had not been busy at all, but uh, this Sunday was probably the busiest day I'd seen. Certainly the busiest day this week. And, and and that's weird because Saturday's weather was fine. But anyway, Sunday was rocking all day. We burned through all of our Bitcoin flyers. Still had a couple hours left in the fair at that point. So, of course, I had a bunch of other propaganda. You know, here in Keene, we've got so much stuff. If you go to tools.freekeen.com, there's actually a list of several of the flyers there. You can look at them online. You can even print them out. Some of them are useful nationally, like the Don't Take a Plea Deal flyer. That's one that you can print out anywhere. In fact, we made a Don't Take a Plea Deal flyer that's specific for national. There's one that kind of mentions New Hampshire stuff, and then there's one that's more written with other people in mind. So you can use some of these tools that we have. Anyway, I had a bunch more flyers there. Copblock.org. We have a uh, kind of a local customized Know Your Rights flyer. Had a big stack of those, and we, uh, Chris Cantwell and I picked those up, and we just started burning through those. I mean, there was uh, just a constant throng of people walking by the booth. There was a, like a demolition derby going on toward the end of, uh, of the fair. So just nonstop people coming by. And, uh, you know, we just hand out these Copblock flyers with one simple statement. Do you know your rights with the police? And just people, you know, no problem. They reach out and take this thing. We burn through those in probably less than 30 minutes. Then That's uh, so encouraging because it says to me that in New Hampshire, people are about to get a little more disobedient <laughs> with the police. Like it, They may not answer all the p- cops' questions. They may not incriminate themselves as they used to. A little That's bit great. of information can go a long way, and you never know who you're going to reach. You never know when you know this stuff will be really, really useful for them. And, uh, and I think it makes a difference. So we burned through the cop block, know your rights flyers. So then we grabbed some other flyers. We've got New Hampshire Jury, nhjury.com, which is all about jury nullification. And that's your right to vote a case, in a, if you're on a jury, based on your opinion about the law, not the facts in the case. You can use your conscience. So we were informing people about that. And then I also had a New Hampshire Independence flyer, which is all about secession. And that's a pretty radical idea. And you'd think that if you're putting a pro-secessionist flyer into people's hands, that could rub people the wrong way, you know, because people love America. But I was so amazed at the responses from people being handed this arguably the most radical of all the flyers that we'd handed out, declaring independence, the idea of that. And people were so receptive of all age ranges. Now, the qualifying question I was asking was, you from New Hampshire? Anyone that said yes, I'd hand it, uh, hand it over to them. And almost everyone who indicated they were from New Hampshire, at least, took that flyer from me. And almost 99, I'd say 90 to 99% of them 
was like a big smile would come across their face. <laughs> their eyes would light up. They would nod their head. They would speak the words I was speaking. It was so encouraging that people are excited about the idea of declaring independence. They want to think about it. They want to talk about it. We'll come back. It's Free Talk Live. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they then those that won't leave us alone determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site. Completely free. 
Once again, that's freetalklive.com. All kinds of cool stuff on there. And uh, if you want to help support the show, then please, you can drop your Bitcoin into the Bitcoin tip jar over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Wait, you don't have Bitcoin yet? Oh, well, easy to solve that. Just go to blockchain.com. If you have a smartphone, you download the new blockchain app and uh, you get that installed within moments you will have the ability to send and receive Bitcoin to anyone anywhere in the world for next to nothing. And I'm not joking. It is so easy. I don't know. Derek, was it you that were telling you? You were telling me about the mycelium wallet. The oh, yeah. Out there? Yeah. I didn't get around to trying that. It was my intention to try that before we uh, jumped into doing this Bitcoin outreach booth for the last five days. It's a great wallet. But what had happened was I had tried the blockchain wallet. To, I wanted to try installing it and creating a new wallet from within the phone app because I had never done that before. It's also to easy to do. See how easy it was. You really install the app and put in a four digit code and you're in. That's I mean, it. That's, that's literally it. However, there was an issue, and I, I, when I get a moment to like breathe from catching up, mm -hmm. I need to send a message to the, the blockchain folks. There were two times, and, and there weren't a whole lot of times when somebody stopped by this outreach booth and was willing to actually stop for long enough to install the blockchain app on their phone. There were actually two instances where the phone would start up, it would say, you know, open a new wallet. And then it would ask for the four-digit code. You put the four-digit code in, and it would never give you the opportunity to hit accept or to, like, there was not even a button or a checkbox or anything like that. So there's, there's a little bit of a bug, I think, in this, uh, this new uh, software, but you know, hopefully it'll get it ironed out quickly. Blockchain is the number one app in the world for, uh, for a good reason, and I think it's, from my experience, it's been a pretty good company. And I know our uh, old friend of the show, Mandrick, is, uh, is working for those folks. So uh, blockchain.com, go there, grab the, uh, grab the app. If it doesn't work when you first install it, and this only saw it happen on Android, um, if it doesn't work when you first install it, you can do the pair the existing wallet option. So when you start the program, there's two options. One, create a new wallet right there in the program. Two, you go on their website. If you've already signed up at blockchain.info, which is their sister site, you sign up at blockchain.info for a wallet, then you scan a QR code with the phone app, and that worked every time I tried it. But that required the person to stand there for longer as I pulled out my laptop, went on blockchain.info, and kind of held their hand through the sign-up process, which took a little bit longer. But we did make it work. Blockchain.com, go there and grab yourself a free Bitcoin wallet today. So I've been talking about uh, my outreach experience over the past week, which was uh, phenomenally uh, positive. I mean, the responses from people about Bitcoin were int very interested. Um, some people were, you know, curious. Well, pe it's coming, and yeah. people have been hearing about it. They so have. They, I, I think that I... Um, but a lot of people Sunday, haven't heard about it. On Sunday, I asked the on the way out of Home Depot, you take Bitcoin? Um, I'm trying to do this now every time I have oh, an, cool. a, an interaction. Um, you know, if you're taking money, I'd like to talk to you about Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and the lady's like, not yet, but I bet you we will someday. Oh, that is encouraging to hear. Now, this is one of the cashiers. Yes, she okay. also liked my Stormtrooper shirt. So you That's know, cool. Let's say she's a She's a rebel. Yeah. I did this uh, also, Mark, at the, the fair. I got I, it from $6shirts.com. It says support the troops. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I did this also at the fair. Now, I didn't do it consistently enough because, mm, like, for instance, when and maybe I should have done it more consistently. Um, there's like the Mr. Smoothie. It's a place that makes smoothies or whatever. And I'm just thinking, oh, they're throwing around drinks. I don't know if that's the safest place for a, an electronic device. And so I didn't ask them about whether they take uh, Bitcoin. And I probably should have. Uh, but it's I did, better than touching dirty paper money. That's a good point. I did. Um, uh, I did ask the vegetarian uh, food truck. There's like this vegetarian food truck thing here in Keene, and they were super interested uh, in it. And they even came over to the booth later on and and asked a bunch of questions. In fact, I'm going to go follow up with them because they actually work here in Keene normally, but they were at the fair uh, for you know the last several days. And so I'm going to stop by there this week and and get them hooked up with a wallet and buy something from them with Bitcoin. So that'll be fun. That would be really cool. It'd be cool if you could also show them how it could work for, like, for their booth. If you had a paper wallet or a paper QR code that people could scan as they came up and you say, hey, you could have one of these. And then mm -hmm. a little device that's already connected to that uh, wallet, you can see that payments went through immediately. Well, something I did later on, there was a guy running an ice cream booth there at the fair. And I'd seen him walk by and I pitched him with the, yeah, do you have any Bitcoin yet? And, you know, he just walked by. But then another time I realized who he was. I realized he was working there. 
And so I, my pitch, I changed my pitch. I said, hey, have you considered taking Bitcoin for your business? And he stopped at that point and had a conversation with me where he had some good questions uh, that he asked. That's and, the key for yeah. Bitcoin is I think that there's more um, self-interest at, at stake. Like a business owner can get it. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, this is money to me. We're, we're talking money now. Oh, as and, soon as you mention the credit card fee, you know, you, that you're cutting fees down to next to zero, that's like a heads up for yeah, a Bitcoin it's or different, a business owner. It's yeah, different it's a things. Big difference. It's different things for different people. Like for some, it's freedom. You know, for others, it's uh, an escape from the state. And mm -hmm. then for others, it's just, hey, I could make more money by cutting out fees. So it was so great to get people, you know, positively responding to Bitcoin. And of course, I had to change my pitch over time. I'd, I'd never done Bitcoin outreach like this. I have flyered people for Bitcoin like downtown a little bit, but um, I'd never done a real consistent kind of pitch everybody that walks by on Bitcoin thing. And so I wasn't as good on Wednesday as I was on Sunday. Mm. There weren't as many there, many people there on Wednesday either, but uh, you know, I was definitely not as polished in the beginning portion of the week with like sense. how I would pitch the idea to people and ultimately um, you know, I did really kind of nail that down and I got to give credit to Christopher Cantwell uh, from christophercantwell.com. I've done a lot of outreach booths in my time, and I've I've volunteered with a you know I've had a lot of people volunteer with me because as I said you're the expert at pretty much any booth, and then you teach the rest of us how to do it. Yeah, I I um he was great. Chris Cantwell was he was as good as I was at this, and you know I don't I don't want to just go pat myself on the back, but I've done a lot of damn outreach booths, and I'm pretty good at being a carnival barker, uh you know talking to people. You got to get their attention. You can't if you're going to do an outreach booth, and I recommend you do it if you can afford to go and set up a booth at the fair to bring the ideas of freedom to people. It's a fun experience that I think is is worth having, and it's not that expensive. We set this booth up for you know 400 bucks. Uh, and that's less than a hundred bucks a day. That's that's not a whole lot of money. Certainly could uh, be to, worse to market to what was probably fifty thousand people over the five days would be my guess, or you know thirty thousand uh, to fifty thousand people. What's but the it, cost of your propaganda? It's pretty, pretty cheap. You know, five cents a flyer for full color printing or something like okay. that. Next, next to nothing. Um, so if you're going to do an outreach booth, you've got to talk to people. There was the uh, there was like an iced tea booth across the way from us, and the girls they had working at this booth. All they did was sit on their phone the whole time. And on, fr I think it was Saturday, one of the guys was there, the electrician for the whole event was there kind of setting up the booth. And somebody asked him, said, is this your booth? Because it seemed weird that the, the event electrician was actually like setting up a booth. And he said, no, it's my wife's booth. And it hasn't really been working out very well. And I said to him, that's because the girls that are there aren't talking to anybody. They're just sitting there on a tablet or on a smartphone. And so when his wife actually worked the booth, who had an incentive to do things differently. Surprise, surprise. That was their best day of, uh, of the fair when that happened. I said, well, you know what you should do is give the workers a commission rather than, because I overheard them, they were giving them 10 bucks an hour just to sit there. Give them a commission. Give them 50 cents a cup or a buck a cup or something like that. And then you'll, you'll see them pitch those things out there, I bet you. Yep, that so, would make a big difference. So yeah, you got to talk to people, and that's you know that's what the way the like the, the Republicans and the Democrats they'll set up a booth, but they just sit there and they wait for the you know the choir to kind of come yeah. over and talk the, to them. The, the one I went over to the Republican booth, and the little old lady uh, was you know she was just sitting there. I think she was knitting or she was on her phone <laughs> or something. You know she had no intention of talking to anybody unless they came and talked to her. Yeah, she certainly did talk once I got up there, but uh, you know other than that, she's not gonna. She's not going to haul anybody in. She's just a little old lady. You know how people are. They're, oh, I'm not, I don't do sales. Mm. You know, like this thing that people talk about. Oh, yes, you do. Your whole life is selling something. You're selling, selling you're yourself. Interacting. Yeah. And so, yes, you do sales. And you just don't choose to, inter to, to use your skills here at this time. All right. So what about you? Do you have outreach booth experience? Have you ever done this kind of stuff? Like, Carnival Barker. And, and by the way, I'm still happy to get Carney stories. Somebody called in with a Carney story a few nights ago, but they we didn't get to their call fast enough. They dropped off the line. I love a good Carney story. So if you want to share that, 855-450 free or bring up anything. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, 
What if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free. This is Free Talk Live, the Carney recap for the last uh, several days as I played Carney uh, at the local county fair. Pitching Bitcoin to folks rather than uh, throwing whatever balls at ducks or trash cans, whatever the Carney Bunko games are. There's a really cool book my dad had when I was growing up called The Bunko Book, B-U-N-C-O. It's actually pretty hard to find now from what I understand, but it showed how all of the Carney games actually work, like how the how much of a scam they are, like how the scams are operated with these Carney games at the at the fairs. Fascinating stuff. So anyway, Bitcoin, of course, not a scam. It's the real deal. Although people were, um, some people were kind of suspect. They had, of course, heard the news about MT Gox going down. And uh, Bitcoin aficionados know 
uh, that the empty Gox story is basically just the story of a failed business, a failed bank. But the way the mainstream media made it look like, the way they made it sound. Bitcoin's done. And either they did this on purpose or they did it through ignorance. But either way, they did it. They made it sound like, oh, it's over for Bitcoin. The, the, it's, the, they came from Japan over at MT Gox and now they're all, it's a failure. Well, no. Just one business went under, just like a bank can go under that does business with dollars. And so I got the chance to explain this to some of the people and correct uh, some misinformation. And uh, it was great. You know, we, as I mentioned earlier, we had over 500 Bitcoin flyers handed out to people. Business owners are interested in taking Bitcoin who weren't that interested before, uh, before hearing our pitch at the fair. And part of the pitch that I uh, found was very effective was mentioning Dell Computer Wikipedia, which, by the way, Wikipedia, I don't know if you heard, but they just started taking Bitcoin within the last week or so. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are like the two, those are the two biggest heavy hitters. Uh, Overstock.com is pretty huge. That's one billion compared to Dell Computer's 47 billion. But yeah, yeah I would mention Overstock here and there. Um, but Dell Computer, I mean, if you're walking by, unless you are a Luddite, you probably know what Dell Computer is. And if you've been online, you've probably been to Wikipedia at some point. So I figured those are two biggies. And then I would also mention a couple of the local businesses that would take it here in Keene, which is uh, Corner News, kind of a local newspaper slash head shop. Uh, there's also uh, a, a hair salon. So whenever the ladies would walk by, I'd always say, you know, hey, you can get your hair done at Motosua Hair Salon. And it was interesting because a lot of people who worked, you know, people are walking by. They're going somewhere. They're not, they're not at the fair to come see your booth. And so you've got to get them to stop and talk to you, or at the very least, stop and take a flyer. And there were a number of people whose interest level changed, and it was visible, when they heard me mention who takes Bitcoin. And then it became something that was worth listening to. Yeah, I think that's a big deal because, yeah. you know, we're sort of a gregarious creature. Uh, humans are a, a bit of a pack animal, and it, it matters what the leaders of the pack are doing. So, yeah, if the people at Dell are taking Bitcoin, perhaps I am a dumb butt for walking by these people in this uh, that are just trying to give me some information. Yeah, and so, you know, for some people, they kind of opened up their ears when they heard Wikipedia. Others opened up when they heard Dell, and others opened up when they heard that a local business uh, was taking it. And uh, it was just an interesting experience. Let's go to Ken. He's on the line. By the way, welcome to our newest affiliate, uh, Talk Radio 850 in Raleigh, North Carolina. They came on board starting tonight. Uh, they're joining us here for well, Free Well, you just Talk did Live. get that in the first hour, didn't you? What? They just squeezed that in in the first hour. Well, I actually had no plans to welcome them tonight because normally I like to wait until I can verify that a new radio station is on board. And now you have verification. Since Ken is actually listening, welcome to uh, everybody tuned in there in Raleigh. Hey, Ken, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Uh, thank you very much. The guy that precedes you on the station, Bill and May, uh, put some work, good words out for you guys. Oh, so, cool. Uh, Oh, him and add a boy when you get a chance. Good, but, good. Uh, I know we're probably anyway, going to get on uh, one of the local shows there too, uh, and you know, be able to say hi more uh, on a more intimate level. It's it's a great market, and you enjoy the callers from this area. They're uh, very informed people and uh, very up to date on the the latest technologies. So, Excellent. Uh, with NC State, University of North Carolina, and Duke University being fifteen minutes apart, and all in your uh, radio listening area. So fantastic. Uh, anyway, I called to. Uh, you asked us about uh, to call in yeah. if uh, we've ever sat at those booths and tried to stir up business. And uh, I think uh, I work for a company, a large heating and air conditioning company that works in one of the uh, big um, hardware retailers. And we're responsible for generating leads for those particular stores. And in turn, that generates business for us mm-hmm. that we wouldn't have otherwise. So uh, the number one thing you just got to mentioning was you were legitimizing the calls. Uh, you know, I'm not just throwing something out there to start a, you know, a, a, a Twitter fest or anything else. These are actual uh, something that's being used uh, by big corporations and some local folks here. So please give me a minute of your time. Yep. And uh, and in doing so, uh, you can the, the the catch is then what what is in it for the consumer, and uh, you know the the cost savings, the the low fees, uh, all those things benefit the consumer, and if uh, Enough of it catches on, then then your prices should theoretically fall. You shouldn't have to pay as much to cover uh, the cost of using your credit card, uh, because as a retailer, we do have to co- recuperate that cost somehow. We just basically turn it around and charge it to the customer. So uh, you know, I, it, 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 you can't sit on your thumbs 
yep. and expect uh, anything to happen. You, you've got to get out and make it happen. The idea of incentivizing those folks sitting at the booth, um, that, that's what you've got to do. You know, it's just like society in general. If you tell them that they don't have to do anything and you can go get a check from the government, uh, they're not going to do anything and get a check from the government. But if you get out and get a job, you can make twice as much what the government would give you, but you got to work for it. So you know, uh, I think not, it's not interesting. Too much different in society. The, 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 the sort of cultures um, of people. Now, when I go to any place with booths, I walk around, I look at every booth, I look at the people that are there, I sort of read their signs, and I go on past. And I'd I, say you're unusual. I would say I'm highly unusual um, in this circumstance. But and most people, they seem to sort of keep, they try to keep their eyes straight ahead of them. It's like you're a panhandler. It's like you're asking them for money or something. They keep their eyes straight ahead. Well, they figure that's what you're going to get around to. They shuffle their feet along, and they they try to get out of there as quickly as they can. And it's just a, it's amazing to me. I mean, you know what? these people are trying to sell you things that make your life better or no thank you either one of these things doesn't really matter Ken? it's either snake oil or it's going to help me and you have to let them know it's going to help them Indeed. so any other Guys, uh, experience I've, 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 you want to share so far, I'll continue to listen. welcome aboard no, Ken. No, just, uh, i mean just just you got to get out there and get after it if you want anything to happen and you that's true in life in general right like that's a that's a true statement period whether we're talking about uh, you know hawking things at a county fair or we're talking about just making your life better uh, improving your station in life so to speak you've got to put it out there you've got to take steps into uncharted territory steps into uh you know outside of your comfort zone great call tonight ken appreciate it and well, welcome aboard there in raleigh our toll free number tonight 855 450 free and if you're listening for the first time in uh, the raleigh area and this is your first opportunity to listen on the radio in raleigh north carolina congratulations you caught us on our first night we've been doing uh this show for over a decade so the free talk live not a new show new, new to we you, are however perhaps. younger than just about everybody yeah. else who's on the radio <laughs> that's generally true yeah we we're, we're going to be the number one uh, radio program in america because we're going to outlive the competition <laughs> Well, I don't know if we're going to be the number one show. I don't know if radio will be around in two decades. Who who knows? But we're here now, and you can join us on the air and bring up whatever you want. That's one of the things that makes Free Talk Live different. It's always open phones every night of the week, and we do the show seven nights a week. Uh, Check your local listings. Uh, For instance, you guys are getting the first two hours of the show there in Raleigh live every single night, so you can actually interact with us like Ken there. And so you can bring up whatever you want. You don't have to call in and talk about being a carny to get on the air with us uh, here tonight, although I would love a carny story if anybody's got one feel free toll free number 855 450 free but also we come at things from a bit of a different perspective you know you might be used to hearing kind of the conserva clones for the lack of a better term out there they all sound the same and then there's of course the progressive talkers we're not either of those uh we like the ideas of freedom here on free talk live so feel free to join the discussion Toll free number 855 450 free now one of the other things about uh what we do here is it's almost like a reality show. Yeah, it's it's open phones. Yeah, we'll take your calls about anything. But we also talk about our personal experiences. We do more than just sit behind microphones, which seems to me to be what most talk show hosts do. They sit behind a microphone and then they talk about their favorite politicians and they, you know, want you to go out and do their bidding or something like that. They might relay something that happened in their day, no yeah. doubt. I was out on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, well, they'll right. They'll talk about their life with their kids or their their wife or something. Uh, the personal stories. But we're activists. But here on Free Talk Live, we're activists. We'll put our our lives and our freedom on the line for the things in which we believe. Derek J, you have been arrested. I have been arrested, not for hurting anybody. But for crimes, so-called crimes, that don't involve a victim at all. So there's no doubt that, you know, we're willing to put something behind our words This is civil disobedience in some ways. It has been. I call it peaceful noncompliance. All right. Yeah, because a lot of times it's not civil disobedience. But when they come after you, if you then do not comply, it becomes noncompliance. And it is as powerful, in my opinion, as civil disobedience. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts here at 855-453. But it turns out, Derek J., that people, some people, they get upset when people do civil disobedience. They get upset when the boat is rocked. And we will share the comments of one hater here in moments. 
Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Look, kid, when guys like us walk into a facility in the morning, we can smell a problem. No one needs to hand us a work order. We already know it. Today, for instance, we need a new gearbox, six globe valves, and a dozen ballasts. And when I smell a problem, Granger smells that I smell a problem. They help me keep this place up and running. Now that's the kind of smell I like. The sweet smell of success. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 4th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,291 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $585. Antiwar.com reports, what is vote fraud? In Afghanistan, the answer isn't so easy. And two weeks after candidate Ashraf Ghani walked out on the audit, complaining they were throwing out too many ballots, rival Abdullah Abdullah is now doing the same, claiming they aren't throwing out enough. Corruption in Afghanistan is ubiquitous to the point of absurdity, and months after the runoff vote, it seems impossible that a satisfying result will come out, while the U.S. is trying to satisfy both candidates with the power-sharing deal. Abdullah had previously released audio evidence of the election commission stuffing the ballot boxes in favor of Ghani and yesterday issued another round of recordings, including the vice president ordering vote rigging in Ghani's favor. All of that looms large after the election commission reported Ghani beat Abdullah by a significant margin, despite Abdullah being the overwhelming front runner going into the runoff election. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The AP reports, for months, CIA Director John Brennan stood firm in his insistence that the CIA had little to be ashamed of after searching the computers of the Senate Intelligence Committee. His defiant posture quickly collapsed after a devastating report by his own Inspector General cited against the CIA on each key point of the dispute with the Senate. According to an unclassified summary of the report released on Thursday, five agency employees two lawyers and three computer specialists improperly accessed Intelligence Committee computers earlier this year during a disagreement over interrogation documents. Then, despite Brennan ordering a halt to the operation, the CIA's Office of Security began an unauthorized investigation that led it to review the emails of Senate staffers and search them for keywords. 
After Senate leaders learned about the intrusion in January and protested, the CIA made a criminal referral to the Justice Department alleging improper behavior by the Senate staffers. That referral, CIA Inspector General David Buckley found, was based on inaccurate information and was not justified. When internal investigators interviewed three CIA specialists, they exhibited a lack of candor according to the Inspector General's report. Those devastating internal conclusions prompted Brennan to abandon his defensive posture and apologize to Intelligence Committee leaders. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports Israel continues its war in Gaza and continues to hammer refugee centers at an alarming rate, hitting the seventh UN-run school of the current war with a drone strike yesterday morning. The drone strike landed in the street immediately in front of the school gates, killing 10 civilians and wounding dozens of others, including children who were clustered around the gate playing. It was, as mentioned, the seventh school hit so far in the war and the third in the past 10 days. The UN has been using the schools as shelters for refugees and gave the Israeli military the exact coordinates in theory to avoid them being mistakenly targeted. Instead, the attacks are becoming so common that Israeli military claims of accidental strikes are no longer credible, and while Israeli politicians have tried to present the shelters as legitimate military targets, their constant targeting is fueling international outrage. The United Nations termed the attack a moral outrage and a criminal act, even the United States, normally up for whatever Israel feels like doing, is no longer dancing around such incidents, with the State Department statement lashing the Israeli attack as disgraceful and reiterating that Israel has to stop attacking civilians. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After months of struggling to find their footing, it looks like the GOP has finally found an effective spokesman. Since Republican leaders unveiled the reanimated corpse of Ronald Reagan at a fundraising event last week, the undead former president has quickly emerged as the new face of the Republican Party. Since Reagan was brought back from the grave by GOP leaders in a top-secret $2.2 million reanimation project, poll data shows Reagan with a higher favorability rating than all other high-profile Republicans combined. The voters know Reagan. They trust Reagan. When he moans at them, they're going to listen. And there's questions as to whether he still has capacity for thought, and he does uh, eat people. But big picture, he's the best option they have right now. And appeared in a series of GOP ads promoting the Republican Party's traditional values. Congress and the president say they're trying to help fix our country's economy. Ronald Reagan and the Republican Party have the right idea for America's future. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can take control here toll free. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Got all kinds of features on our website. Go and enjoy for free at freetalklive.com with you in the studio this evening. You've got Ian here, Derek J, and Mark. Derek J is here courtesy of his radio show, Peace News Now. Go to peacenewsnow.com. It's an online uh, program which uh, kind of focuses on peaceful resistance. Would that be right? Yep, that's the whole idea. There's peaceful resistance happening every day all around the world, and it doesn't get as much play in the mainstream media. So I like to focus my attention on that for four hours each week live, and you can call in. The show is at peacenewsnow.com. And we were just, D- Derek, um, when you say your name, uh, that when we come back, I can almost hear the jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, I, I always <laughs> extend my arms. I'm very excited to be on and say my name. You know, I think gesturing still helps even though you're on the radio. Oh, I think I, it does too, yeah. I mean, people yeah. can't see you, but I think it helps people express themselves more effectively. Yeah, it, it helps those sound waves bounce right through the microphone. So share your thoughts here and bounce your ideas through the radio waves. Uh, Toll free at 855-450-FREE. First hour of the show, we talked about Bitcoin and uh, the Bitcoin outreach booth 
that I had the pleasure of setting up the local county fair. There's a, a recap story. If you missed that discussion, you can go and uh, you can look at some pictures. Go to freekeen.com. You can see kind of the recap there. I linked to it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. And if you're not following Free Talk Live on Facebook, well, you are certainly invited to do that. Just go to the, you can just go to facebook.freetalklive.com. It's a shortcut we've created that'll take you right to our Facebook page. And then you hit the like button. Don't forget to hover over the like button for just a moment. Then the little menu drops down. Click get notifications under that menu because mm -hmm. if you don't do that you'll almost never see us you'll mm -hmm. never see us in your feed that's just the way facebook works it's a ridiculous system but you got to know how to work the system and that's how you do it so we were talking about civil disobedience a moment ago Derek j and of course you are notorious in some circles for uh being a civilly disobedient i also have uh, done a share of it as well you and i have been collectively behind bars in a jail cell. I think, what, we got about four months uh, total between the two of us. You were there for a couple yep. months. I was there for a couple months. Yep. Uh, we didn't hurt anybody. We just engaged in some civil disobedience and some non-cooperation. And it turns out that when you do that stuff, some people get their cage rattled. But I wish rattled. more people would, honestly. Do I civil think, disobedience? Yeah, or in other words, follow their own conscience. Mm. I think if more people would follow their own conscience, the world would right itself. I totally agree. I think I think everybody would be safer from the aggression of the people calling themselves the state if people didn't just bend over for these bullies, for these you know government agents who think they know what's best. They want to tell you how to live your life. They want to force you to do things you don't want to do and force you to not do things that you do want to do. And it's just ridiculous. Right. Especially just, things that, when you're not hurting people. I right. mean, obviously, if you're in, infringing on other people's rights, that's another story. Yeah, and thank you for pointing that, uh, pointing out the obvious. I guess it does have to be pointed out sometimes. I'm talking about actions that do no harm to others, and uh, those actions should be legal if you know committed with consent of all the parties involved. I don't see what the problem with that is. But uh, civil disobedience is a way to bring attention to an issue. So if cannabis is illegal, smoking it in public is a way to, and then being arrested for it, is a way to bring uh, attention to that issue. Of course, you don't have to smoke the pot. There was actually Andrew Carroll who moved here before you did, mm -hmm. Derek J. He stood in public and held a bud of marijuana in his hand. He wasn't a smoker. At the time, he was not a smoker. Oh, and things changed. Okay, uh, <laughs> and uh, shows how out of touch I am. The police arrested him for that, and it was just you know the whole thing was ridiculous from from start to uh, to finish. Not the holding of the bud, but the way the police responded to it, as though it was some sort of criminal act, as though you know people needed to be forced. The ta taxpayers, like you, needed to be forced to pay to take that young man, put him in handcuffs, take him down to uh, to, to the jail and or the police station, book him, release him, and then put him in a jail cell. Ultimately, I think he spent about two weeks in jail uh, wow. when he was convicted of that. And I don't know if you knew, know the story there, but he actually walked out to the jail, which at that time was a different jail. It was much further away than the current jail. It was like a half-hour drive to get to that jail. He actually it started walked. out pretty early in the morning. Yeah, he actually walked there to turn himself in. Wow. It's a protest. Pretty cool stuff. So anyway, when you do civil disobedience, it's going to rub people the wrong way. And so it's civil disobedience here in New Hampshire has always been this kind of uh, controversial thing. And, and I mentioned New Hampshire because if you're new to the show, and we do have a new affiliate in Raleigh, North Carolina tonight, Talk Radio 850, welcome aboard to all the listeners there. You'll learn about the Free State Project as you're listening to Free Talk Live. Now, Derek J., what is the Free State Project? Uh, the Free State Project is an idea of moving 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to the same geographic location to get active for liberty in our lifetime. And I am one of those people. I uh, signed up at freestateproject.org saying that I intend to move to New Hampshire uh, when 20,000 others agree to do the same. But I got too eager and just moved moved early you moved mm. anyway and there's uh, about 15 or 1600 of us that have done that that's right that's yeah and i realized that i don't need to wait for all 20,000 to sign up there's already really exciting stuff going on and i don't want to miss it i have to be a part of it yeah. so i moved up here early and uh it's been the best decision of my life 
I have to agree. I mean, totally with what you've said there. And there is there was already stuff happening here in 2004, 2005, right after New Hampshire was chosen. There mm-hmm. were 10 candidate states for where the destination was going to be for the Free State Project. New Hampshire won overwhelmingly, and people immediately started to move, uh, and they started to do things that were you know, showing up on our radar here because I was paying attention to what was happening there. And I thought, gosh, I've got to be there. I've got to be there if for no other reason to record what's happening, to, you know, talk about it on my radio show. And of course, you know, the positive, uh, the positivity of the movers here infected me and the civil disobedience uh, brought me in and and I became one of the civil disobedience uh, as well. We did some civil disobedience today, sort of, some non-cooperation. But that's not uh, necessarily what the project's about. I mean, let's not forget that— uh, No, there's politics. People are getting elected. And very uh, successfully. You know, liberty-minded people are actually getting elected as uh, Republicans and Democrats here in New Hampshire, and they're introducing legislation to actually roll back some some government and stop some bad legislation, things like that. So it's been an amazing experience from all different aspects. But you and I did a little bit of civil disobedience, maybe non-cooperation. I didn't even active. realize we were doing it today, honestly. Yeah. Well, it was once, just so natural. Right. <laughs> once you do enough of it, it's just, you know, it comes secondhand. And uh, what was happening was we were at court uh, to support a local activist who was uh, challenging a speeding ticket, mm-hmm. which is also non-cooperation when you don't just pony up the cash for your speeding tickets and you instead take them to trial and make the state people work for their convictions. Uh, we were there and it was actually, it turned out it was a pretrial conference, not an actual trial. The uh, prosecutor, this is where the prosecutor sits down with you and uh, attempts to pitch you on taking a a plea deal. They want you to just, you know, make it go away. And that's what most people want. They don't want to go to court. Well, let's say far fewer than 1% of cases in this country result in a trial. So arrests to trial, far fewer than 1%. Best I can tell, it's fewer than 0.25%. That's a really small amount, fewer than like one in 500. So this prosecutor is calling people in one by one into a conference room in the courthouse, and that's where the the deal's being done. And he wants you to take the plea, whatever it is he's offering. And so he calls up the young lady who is uh, in question here with this case, and she's got seven people, I think, there to support her Mm -hmm. at this pre-trial conference. That's incredible. Which is a lot. Well, a lot of us thought it was actually going to be a trial, so that may have affected why more people came out. And it's a common, you know, a lot of people, it's it's your first time in court. You don't don't know one hearing from another. You get a a piece of paper from the court saying, be here or you're going to jail. Sounds like a trial. Yeah, (laughs) sounds like it's pretty important. So uh, he calls her up, and Derek, you and I, and uh, Garrett, Ian, we all have video cameras, and we start approaching, and the other folks start approaching as well, all to go into this tiny little conference room where it would likely have been standing room only. And this guy's he immediately starts saying that he doesn't consent to being video recorded. And Too he's bad, not buddy. You're already you on. You, you should have been taking a government paycheck because you're a public yeah. servant. Public servants on public property deserve to be uh, viewed yep. by the public. See, this is really the problem in this country is that people that work for the public believe that they work for the private sector. They think they're the masters when, in fact, they're supposed to be the servants. Well, there's no evidence they actually work for you, Mark. No. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the God's honest right. truth. The fact is they are the masters, and they yeah. lie to you and tell you they're the servants. Yeah, they are the public when you talk about public servants. They serve themselves. But we'll talk more about what happened here in moments and why some people are really upset at us. It's Free Talk Live. Crashed the death of the dollar. It's a hot new novel. It has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an ex- Don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. 
Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth? Slide, Slide into, into a recession, recession or worse, worse depression. depression. Hi, Ted, Hi, Ted Anderson, Anderson from Midas, from Midas Resources. Resources. We all we know when a company acts responsibly, irresponsibly, that investing, that investing ourselves in a move towards safety, safety is prudent. prudent. When, the when the market becomes, becomes volatile, volatile US, US treasuries, treasuries are a safe, safe haven. haven. But, what but what do you do when the US, when the US government, government overextends itself, itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful Powerful title, title, 10 Reasons, 10 reasons to own gold, 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 discussing, discussing costs, costs, benefits, benefits risks, risks, featuring full-color full color illustrations, illustrations, weights, weights and, and measures. measures. The book, the book is, free is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold, 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You know, when you talk to government agents, uh, the theory is you're supposed to be able to talk to them, like with them, have a conversation. They're supposed to be your servant, supposedly there, you know, there to help you. I'm not sure what they're helping you with. In most instances, it seems like they're helping you out of your freedom, uh, your property, or your money. But that's another issue. Regardless, Der uh, Derek J., you and I were at a courthouse today where a prosecutor refused to talk to us on the record. Not and us. Not, well, he true, refused not to us. talk to the, the girl he was trying to prosecute. Right. Um, and we were there to record it. So we'll continue with that story here in a moment. I don't think he wanted to really talk to me either, though. When I was trying to interact with him, I asked him what his name was. He handed me his business card rather than just tell me uh, the answer. So we'll continue that story here. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I want to let you know about ModUp.net and Modafinil. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get the extra edge when it counts, check out Modafinil at ModUp.net. One in five students, according to studies, use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get 
things done. Businessmen around the world are also talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Now, over at modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency so you get significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net, also you get a Bitcoin discount, 33% off. That's pretty significant. Plus, for an even better deal, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets at checkout over at modup.net. So again, that's code FTL, world-class service at a great price on modafinil. Modup.net, M-O-D-U-P.net, code FTL. As we continue here, kind of recapping a little bit of what happened today, Derek J., you, myself, and uh, several other people were out to support a local activist who was challenging a speeding ticket when her name was called. Uh, the prosecutor beckoned her into the office, and he says, Whoa, I don't consent to being recorded, because I, you know, I started approaching, Derek, you started approaching with a video camera. Hmm. Well, that's awesome because we didn't ask you. I don't consent to being recorded, and I will only allow one other person to come in with her. And my perspective on this, which I voiced, was that, well, wait a minute, aren't you a police officer? You know, don't, don't you work for the government? But more specifically, aren't you a police officer? And in point of fact, this guy is a police officer. Uh, as I understand it, he had a mm-hmm. badge on, uh, as a matter of fact. And, you know, the, the court decisions that have come out recently, the the Glick decision, there's actually a fresh one out of Texas with Antonio Bueller. Yep. Uh, really, judges- really, police officers in America, really, really. You can't. You don't. You don't get to consent whether you're being recorded or not. Right, and it doesn't matter if you're not in public. I mean, this was he was going to be going into a private conference room in a private building. I guess it's a public and building, but police officers of America, if you decide to arrest somebody because they're recording you, and you just make up some you know charge like disturbing the peace or whatever, really, if that person takes it to trial, there's really going to be a a judgment against your department. And I don't know how that goes at your department, but I can tell you enough of those judgments is going to affect the insurance insurance on your department, mm-hmm. and that's going to affect the community um, that you're supposed to be serving. I know, largely, you don't care about any of those things. I also want to back up and also yeah. talk about what's really happening here. Is This girl was driving, accused of driving in, a, in an unsafe manner, but no, of ticket. course no victim. Yeah. And then a man with a gun pulls her over, insists with a piece of paper that she appear somewhere at a certain time and day or in else. a certain building. Right, And then uh, more men with guns are coming to negotiate with her in a private room. They want to be off the record. Oh, yeah. Uh, This doesn't sound like a friendly government servant type situation. No, it doesn't sound like any form of service to me. Well, as far as I've come to the conclus't that speeding tickets are essentially just uh, it's just a revenue stream that is not even intended to keep us safe. The mm. fact is is that police officers out there can't catch a speeder on a regular basis. If you're a speeder, you might get caught every ten thousand times, maybe every thousand times every every ten thousand times. If you catch somebody that um, infrequently, then you're not going to stop the behavior. It doesn't really matter sure. what you do other than roadside Obviously, execution. checkpoints on every block. Well, I, I think that <laughs> if you really want to stop speeding, and I, I think that many of the speeding um, speed limits are artificially low, but if you really wanted to stop that, then a speed camera on the side of the road, uh, you know, checking people's licenses or whatever, you know, doing those, what do they call this, the speed ticket things, yeah. um, that would be a way to do it. It's not a good idea, though, because then you're creating a police state. And uh, then you've got these private companies sending out tickets to people who well, there's own no reason the it has to be. They're it, not even the driver. It's no reason there has to be private uh, public collusion on this one. But I get what you're saying, and I have a concern in that in that area too. But let's not pretend this is about speeding. Yeah, that's all the, you're saying. The fact is, is that if somebody comes, you know, this guy, I'm speeding down the road going 15 miles an hour over the limit. Some guy um, coming from the opposite direction flips on uh, flashing lights, goes 35 miles an hour over the limit to catch me. Right. Um, then pulls me off to the side of the road with flashing lights. I'm a volunteer firefighter. I can tell you flashing lights on the side of the road cause accidents because mm, sure. I've seen it happen at two accidents I've been at. I've seen other accidents occur right there. Yeah, everybody's being a looky-loo, looking and seeing what's going on with the accident rather than paying attention in front of them. As- so this guy, he didn't talk to me. I mean, it's it seems like when a person, like a government bureaucrat, doesn't want to be on camera, they choose one. Like, mm-hmm. you're in charge here. You're the tallest. <laughs> you know, like you just... <laughs> 
Uh, it's like cop mentality or something, right? This was it's, a pretty quick interaction, too. Like, he came out. Beckham, but there were, like, three video cameras right. focused on him, at least. And, oh, he and wanted then, to scurry away into the shadows. Well, he wasn't complaining about the government's own security cameras, by the way. Those those were okay. Those will be fine inside the well, office. Well, those don't record audio, so mm. he wouldn't get his whatever whatever he was going to say, which he, he never wants, got to. Cause, you wouldn't know if he's recording audio in that room or not. But yeah. as far as he's concerned, it's okay for him to record. Sure. As far as they're concerned, it's not okay for you to record. Yes, it's not wiretapping when they do it. And their law even makes it clear if it's a law enforcement officer who's wire wiretapping, recording people without their consent, that's that's legal. On the other hand, I have to give cred for him even valuing the idea of consent. Like in most cases, police don't care about consent. He only Dude, cared about his own. Only his own. Yeah. Well, okay. So, but at least he's lending tribute to the idea that consent matters. But it shouldn't matter in his circumstance, right? Well, like yeah. he's a government bureaucrat. In New Hampshire, there's, I think it's Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution, says these guys are supposed to be open and responsive, and this guy was anything but. Yes, but I I don't believe in those silly rules that they're, they're neither. Uh, neither supposedly, they. right, they don't believe in them and neither but do I. But it's fun so to cite them in no, their face yeah, and but like, let's not not pretend, following your own rules. Yeah, but let's not pretend that they're going to hold themselves to their own standard. The reality is I consent don't, but the does point matter. Of, the point of pointing it out is to show other people who don't know that, right? I just want to be nice. When, yeah. when I'm having an interaction with someone who says, hey, I don't consent to that. I want to take that seriously because I do believe consent matters. And I want to just gently explain to this guy, like, yes, I, I get that you don't consent to this interaction, but see, this whole thing that's happening here is not consensual. Mm -hmm. You're forcing this young lady to go into this private room. Uh, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to be here to record. You're a public servant. Or so you claim to That's be. That's the claim. He scurried off. Um, he actually told the young lady in this case that... If if we wanted to record, he was just not going to meet with her, and we'll just go straight to trial. Which, of course, would likely have been the outcome of the meeting anyway, would be that they would have gone to trial. So, meeting didn't happen, and we left. Toll-free numbers, 855-453-free. Oh, and we have footage, and Derek J. will be putting that up at some point. Uh, free Keen, you going to drop it up there? Yep. All right, freekeen.com. We'll come back with more Free Talk Live here in moments. Your call's about anything. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply, I'm thinking of you. ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code PLOW. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I mean, it's just so hard to believe that it's really all gone. It was in this living room three weeks ago that the Talbot family discovered their DVR had suddenly and inexplicably crashed, deleting more than five years worth of recorded live events and miniseries. I keep having flashbacks to that day, to that moment when I realized everything was gone. You know, you hear stories about people who mismanage their device settings, but you never really think it could happen to you. Honestly, it feels like some sort of a dream, like, when I wake up, I'll be able to just go downstairs, turn on the TV, and all the episodes will be there again, as if nothing had ever happened. Friends and family of the Talbots have pledged their support, organizing DVD donations and offering passwords to online streaming services while the family struggles to move on. We know that we'll never be able to replace all the hours of programming that we had, but I think in the end, we'll be just fine. As long as we have our five seasons of Seinfeld on DVD. This is the Onion News Network. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, inviting you to take control of the airwaves here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, bureaucrats misbehaving. That's what we are kind of talking about right now with a slimy prosecutor, police prosecutor, refusing to uh, conduct a plea deal session, conduct a, what they call a tr- pre- pretrial conference uh, on video, on the record. And it was the wish of the person who was going to attend that conference that this conference be held on the record. And if a government bureaucrat is going to talk to you, then they should be willing to have that conversation on the record. Otherwise, what is it that they're trying to hide? And what would happen if this uh, person didn't come and meet with them? Uh, Probably a failure to appear would be issued, although I don't know if that would happen on a pretrial conference. I, I wonder what would ha- transpire in a pretrial conference, because you're not in front of a judge, so I don't know if failure to appear would actually apply there. They may just set the trial for, uh, you know, they may just set a trial date and move ahead. Well, I don't know, though. Yeah, but even not knowing, I think, is, is scarier than anything. Like, oh, I just have to appear. I have to be at this building. I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what's going to happen. And it's just a, such a scary situation over just a speeding ticket yeah absolutely Ridiculous. is so we'll get you the video footage up soon at freekeen.com stay tuned there and your call's coming up at 855 450 free oh and by the way we have skype i have not mentioned this enough tonight you can skype into the show our username is lrn.fm so if you've got skype on your smartphone or at home it's worth it it's worth it to use skype to connect it makes it sound a lot better it makes you easier to understand meaning we're more likely to keep you on and talk to you longer i love my magic mud my magic mud is a tooth powder it's a super black as midnight tooth powder and what it does is besides cleaning your teeth and it does this in a in a fashion that i have never experienced before i wake up in the morning and i don't have a film in my mouth like i used to toothpaste never got my mouth as clean as my magic mud has it's uh, made out of um, actually charcoal um, charcoalized uh, coconut husks because they're apparently the most activated so it's the same thing that are in water filters that grab all the impurities out of water when you filter it well it's in that plus it's um, bentonite clay i guess is uh is is the other stuff Um, and what it does is it cleans your mouth in a way that, that I've never experienced before. But it also removes stains from your teeth. Now, it's 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 really not very abrasive at all comparative to, say, toothpaste. It's less abrasive than um, toothpaste, certainly less abrasive than baking soda. But it gets the stains right off your teeth. In, it, in the first application, you'll be able to tell a difference. In four applications, I had nary a stain on my teeth. I didn't really realize I had stains on my teeth until I used this product. Mm. I'm like, oh. Look, stains. <laughs> so for me, it was really was a whitener in the sense that I didn't realize I had stains. But 
it's not a whitener in the sense that it sort of chemically whitens. Um, it, you, it's it's all natural. It's created by a homeschooling, liberty loving mother of three, and she makes sure that she uses only completely natural um, stuff in in this. And it has been just tremendously, wildly successful, um, hopefully in part by its advertising on uh, Free Talk Live, but probably not in small account because you can go to mymagicmud.com and see biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole as he explains the benefits, many of the benefits of My Magic Mud. It's mymagicmud.com, and I will never be without this stuff again. It has really changed wow, my life. That's an endorsement. Yeah, even if even if they decide, you know what, advertising isn't working on Free Talk Live or anymore or whatever, this stuff, I've never had anything get my mouth. This You're plate. a coffee drinker too, so it's it's going to be important. I'm a very dedicated coffee drinker. <laughs> pot a day, right? <laughs> More than that, I now put a coffee pot in the studio, <laughs> right. so I'm drinking some here too. It's better than drinking. Your sugar, addiction is progressing. Sh- sugarized soda. It, well, it's decaf. I mean, what do you really call? This is just a habit. Okay, good point. MyMagicMud.com. All right, let's continue here. Dennis is with us in Concord. Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. Howdy, guys. Hey. So I've got a libertarian conundrum. I kind of thought I I would take this uh, ethical issue to the group, and maybe you guys can help give me some direction as to where to go. We will give you some opinions. Uh, (laughs) Ultimately, it's up to you to make your mind up, but please share. So, you know, I, I think a lot of times for libertarians, we, we tend to see everything kind of as very black and white, very easy. Oh, just take the pro-liberty angle, and if there's, there's no aggression, then it's simple. Liberty's but, the in, answer. What's the question? Yeah. In the real world, uh, you know, when you, when you are actually uh, in the seat of power, as it were, if you're making the decision, it's not always so cut and dry. So mm, we, sure. we have a situation. One of the things I love about New Hampshire, I love about New Hampshire— is the way that garbage pickup is done or not done. <clears throat> and, you know, the fact that many, many, many towns in New Hampshire, <clears throat> there is no municipal corporation that picks up your garbage. It's, you know, you take the garbage to the dump or you contract with one of a number of different individuals, private companies or just private people who will take your garbage to the dump for you. Yeah, and people a- can't believe when we talk about this uh, <laughs> oftentimes, people can't believe you're kidding me. I was the, surprised. The garbage isn't picked up by the government? When I moved here, I was surprised by it. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing. I love that about New Hampshire. We, we have an issue in my town right now that's been going on for a couple of years with, with trash and trash disposal and what do we do about it and how do we work it. And we, we implemented what's called the pay-by-bag program that I was actually pretty uh, involved with getting that into place. The idea being that if you're going to take municipal waste from your household – and dump it into the, the, the dump that is owned and managed by the town, then you had to pay for that waste by buying a, a special garbage bag <clears throat> instead of having everyone pay a flat rate out of your taxes to pay for it. It turned into a user fee, more like a normal company. So like you, okay. only if you use this service do you pay for it. And you know, a lot of people love the, the green bags because it supposedly encourages recycling. I love the green bags because it encourages encouraged a free market and got the government out of a monopoly in in anything to do with trash in this town. That was just so beautiful and so wonderful. A lot of people hate it because they felt like, oh, you're forcing me to buy this green bag, which is the opposite of what happened. We weren't forcing you to buy a green bag. We gave you the option to either pay for the trash that you put away here or put your trash somewhere else and don't pay us anything. It it was however, um <clears throat> so so I'm on this little committee that is trying to determine what to do about you know, long term, how do we handle trash in the town? What are the options? Explore every option. And today we met with a rep from a big waste uh, hauling, waste management. It wasn't the company waste management, but a, a waste management company, right? Mm-hmm. And here's the thing if we were to implement um, a particular solution that they have, and they've got a bunch of, you know, they've got a menu of options, but there's one option that they have that by and large, for the 80-plus percent of people in town that do dump their trash in the municipal dump. Where do the other 15 percent uh, dump their trash? They they have it contracted out to, like, a private uh, hauler that hauls it somewhere farther. way out farther okay. away. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if we went with this with this plan, the, the 80, 85 percent of the, of the town would pay, like, less than a third— of what they do now 
for, for getting rid of their trash, you know, much, much reduced rate. And on top of that, um, they have every eco beautiful thing that you can imagine. So you, you can do single stream recycling. Just if it's basically recyclable, you just throw it in this big blue bin and they will take care of recycling it for you. No problem. Whereas today, if you want to re recycle in this town, you have to separate your tin from your aluminum, mm -hmm. from your plastic, number one. And so not a lot of people recycle. And I am kind of a, you know, just because I'm a libertarian doesn't mean that I'm not conscious of so, our environment. Dennis, I'm not real clear. Is this company proposing to take over operation of the landfill? What's their proposal? Well, exactly? This would probably They're, be the uh, the transfer station, right? Yeah. What, what they would propose to do is to pick up people's trash. From and their take houses? It from their houses and take it somewhere else, not to our own transfer. Basically, we would have to sort of mothball our transfer station or use our transfer station just for big appliances you know like if you're doing construction demolition or getting rid of your fridge yeah that's paint. the only thing that our yeah paint you know other than you know but your basic trash the 99 percent of the trash that you make this company would take but they can only do it at this super low rate if it's pretty much mandatory for everybody in town uh -huh. i figured that was where this was going so what do i do what well, do i do excellent question let's talk about it when we come back hang on dennis we'll bring you back as well dennis calling from concord this is not an, uh, this is not a typical situation. Most places there's always a monopoly government provider of trash. You don't have any choice and the pro proposal is to take away the choice in Dennis's town. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 what if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No State Project, and are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, where you may bring up whatever's on your mind toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about garbage. At the moment, and uh, Dennis is on the line with us, uh, calling from uh, Concord, and he's on some or the Concord area. He's on some sort of committee in a town, I think, not not actually Concord, but he's on some kind of garbage committee that's supposed to look at you know the garbage situation and the options and you know how can things be improved or something like that. And the proposal has been, as I understood it, we're going to bring Dennis back on to clarify. But the proposal from some trash company has been. We can make it so your customers the in the area are paying a third of the cost of what they're currently paying to throw trash away here in the whatever town it is. But the only thing is you'd have to implement a government monopoly over garbage collection. And for our listeners that don't know, uh, that, that can't even comprehend this, in New Hampshire, you get to choose in most places. Maybe there are some towns in New Hampshire where there is a monopoly. I don't know about mm-hmm. that. But here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, there is no monopoly on garbage pickup. The government does run the transfer station here in town, and I do believe they mandated that all garbage companies picking up in Keene take it to their transfer station. So there's sort of a monopoly in that way, in that if you are running a garbage company operating in Keene, they uh, don't want you to go to another transfer station in a different town. But as an individual homeowner or renter, you have to decide who pick up picks up your garbage. If anyone, you pick your own garbage up and take it out to the transfer station. You don't have to have a garbage do. company do it. Uh, well, you live fairly close to it, so that, that helps you as well. Indeed, but I do. And you have a big truck. Um, but uh, I you was know, taking it when I didn't have a yeah, big truck. I pay, I pay somebody to do it. I got other things I'd rather do with my time than haul uh, garbage out to the dump. When you get there, a lot of times there's a long line, and you got to wait in the line to get in. And I, it's not worth my time. So, But I get to make that choice here in New Hampshire, and most of our listeners have never made that choice. It, in Florida, where I'm from originally, that was like a, a, a totally foreign concept to me. When I got up here to New Hampshire and I discovered that, wait a minute, the garbage isn't just being collected? What's happening here? <laughs> How You have to call a company to contract to get garbage? This is awesome. I thought it was really exciting. But, Dennis, you're saying that the, the proposal is to take away that choice from people. But the pitch is that the cost would be lower. Sounds too good to be true to me, Dennis. But go ahead. Any other uh, additional info you want to give us here before uh, Derek J. or Mark renders a verdict on uh, what should be done? Well, it's definitely not too good to be true. I mean, I've, I've walked through the numbers. You know, they have a contract. I mean, it, it's not like a formal thing that I can sign today. But, you know, they're they're quoting us a number that if they're anywhere near that number, yeah, pretty much everybody in town is going to save 65 or more percent on what they're paying now to get rid of their trash. And as it turns out, I'm one of the 10 percent of people that would lose out in this because I live pretty close to the dump mm-hmm. or to the transfer station. So I just drive my own garbage over there once every week or two, and it's no big deal for me. So I would pay a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But on but the you're other currently hand, I play, have, paying for, per bag, right? That's right. I would not have to pay the bags. So it you know, it would cost a little more for me, but it would barely be noticeable. And, you know, there, there's so so there's that. And I'm just really looking forward to getting some input from you guys. I mean, it would be easy to say, oh, yes, if there's any coercion, it's it's wrong. Um, 
flip side, there is some coercion in that there is a, a tiny amount of tax money that goes into running the transfer station now. Um, <clears throat> and just the fact that for the vast majority of the town, it would significantly reduce their cost. It's also, um, you know, they, they do all the recycling stuff. And I'd like to point out that when you don't have uh, this ability for people to throw things away for free, and I don't, I'm using air quotes on free here, uh, without any direct cost to them at that moment in time, what you'll often find is people are just dumping in places. Mm. Um, you mm. know, like we illegal we dumping. Yeah, we tried this at our town, and they'll, they'll just like throw them at the gate of the uh, the transfer station when nobody's there. But just to that clarify, kind of Dennis, what you're saying here. There's this company that's come to the town. They've said, all right, here's our pitch. We're going to take care of the whole town garbage collection. The cost will be down to a third, but we're going to take it to our transfer station or some other transfer station, not the town-run one. So you'll have to shut your transfer station basically down, meaning that the people who are currently taking out their own garbage to the transfer station will no longer have that as an option, at least in the town. In theory, they could take it to a different town's transfer station, I guess, at that point. But they would be out of one option as far as where they could take their garbage. They would be inconvenienced uh, if they didn't want to sign on to this. And, and then they would still have these garbage people stopping by their house on a regular basis, and they could throw things out. Like, everyone would be coerced into paying for this. That's correct. Even if you didn't use the service, it would be a tax and you'd be paying for it anyways. And well, this would be part of property taxes would be uh, included in that? That's right. And is there absolutely no room for negotiation where this can become an opt-in system because the one transfer station that's already functioning has to be shut down? Is that right? I, you know, I did ask this question, like, could you do it on a subscription basis? Right. And they they're not really too happy with that. Um, the way that yeah, they it means they have to provide it, customer service, right? Like if well, you no, it's it's no. What it, their, their concern was, they don't like the idea of running the current local guys out of business. And what they typically do is hire the current local guys uh, into their company and say, well, you still have a job. Maybe you don't have your own business, but we're not going to suddenly take away your you know your bread and butter if you want to drive. You know, you can keep your truck if it meets with our trucks specs and you know but it does mean they don't have to provide the same level they, they of customer of service dennis i mean uh if all they're servicing if That's their client point. is the town then they're only negotiating with the town you and your cohort cohorts on the committee um you know if their customers are the customers are upset eventually i guess the contract could be dissolved with the town but that's another question how long does the contract run on this uh, it, it depends. We can do like a five years up to a 10 years, and there's various so, price breaks based on this and that, but yeah. Do they lock the price in as far as what it costs to collect for that time frame, or could they raise the price every year? That's that's right. They no, lock it in. It, it, it's locked in, and, and I'm because that factors in the price of gas and because I'm one of these tinfoil hat-wearing people that thinks that any moment now the economy is going to go to crap and inflation is going to go nuts, I love the idea of locking in a price for hauling stuff in big trucks for— 10 years and letting them eat the cost of the inflation as long as they okay. stay in business i believe i have the solution um you know let's see whether or not uh, so you the guys question is what should dennis do as a liberty loving person who generally likes the idea of getting government out of people's lives and but not he's having a politician not having a monopoly which means that he has to make some tough decisions sometimes yep. and i understand the decision because people could be mad at him for this if they have you know if, if people are supporting the idea of paying a third of the cost of pickup of garbage they could be upset if he says no to this okay so the person that's signing the contract here is the town of whatever right mm. yeah, yes that's right is it a municipality this municipality is it a town i i don't even know the difference it's, it's the town of hopkinton yeah okay um so the town is liable for the amount and then they're just going to charge you 750 or whatever it is per house right right you uh, sign the contract you get the uh, service from this company and you allow people in the town if they wish to opt out, you adjust the price based on um, how many people opt out of the service. So, you know, if there's 600 mm. households and 50 of them opt out, it bumps the price up to eight bucks, which mm. is still a 60 percent uh, price cut or whatever. And you pass a little law or rule or whatever that says that anybody who's opted out who gets caught putting garbage out for these people uh, first gets a warning, second gets a hundred dollar fine, and then all other fines after that are a thousand bucks. Because mm. anybody who does that is an a hole of the highest degree, in my opinion. 
That's interesting because then you're bringing it to essentially a group negotiation for price. If there, if there's an opt out provision, then you're just negotiating on behalf of a group of people who want to get a, a quantity discount, basically, because that's the that's why it's costly to have multiple companies picking up garbage is because they have to know which houses to pick up from. They don't have the efficiency of being able to hit the every house on a route. The only this place is you're so using- dirty because now Mark has introduced punishment into a situation where formerly there was yeah none. somebody who's stealing. Well, I'm introducing punishment for theft. I know, but it's a new it's a new invented crime that didn't exist before. I'm a little decision, uncomfortable with you know? that. But I'm, Derek, what's your answer for Dennis? Well, it's tough because for me, the no brainer is save people money. Hey, that's if you could save people money, go and do it right now. That's the thing to do. But uh, even if it means a little bit of compromise, but then I, I looked up, hey, can the cops or can the government go through your trash? And I, I found out the Supreme Court has ruled, yes, cops can seize and search abandoned property, which so can anyone trash else? is. Yeah, so, but when people have private trash collection, I think it's less likely uh, that they would have authorities digging through their trash. When they have the government already picking it up, it's a lot more likely that that sort of thing would happen. This is uh, New Hampshire, and most houses have some wood wood burning device. If you want to keep something uh, like papers, uh, personal papers, out of the hands of others, because I can tell you, my wife specifically sends me out to the the outdoor wood boiler with credit cards type stuff. You know, the information that she doesn't want going else outward, and it's set on fire and turned into heat to feed uh, to heat it my also family's seems, house. But it also seems that like New Hampshire is an anomaly in that it has more freedom in this trash collection mm-hmm. thing and this waste management company uh, isn't familiar with that and they may adjust their business model when they see that hey this doesn't work for New Hampshire. Yeah like be the stick in the mud the kind of the New Hampshire stick in the mud right like well we like our freedom if you can work with us I like Mark's proposal on the side of you know let people opt out I'm not so sure about the whole enforcement thing I mean if somebody's yeah. stealing from the company let the company bring you know, oh, the police bunch involved of free riders. That's in, what we need. investigate theft. We already have laws for theft. Dennis, thanks for the call. Look, good luck with the decision. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, August 4th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,295, silver opened at $20.41, and Bitcoin is trading around $586. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. 
In the news, a newly released report from a Central Intelligence Agency inspector general confirms that the agency improperly and possibly unconstitutionally accessed the computers of Senate staff. CIA officers read the emails without permission while investigating what information members of the Senate Intelligence Committee accessed during their investigation of the CIA's interrogation and torture techniques. CIA Director John Brennan apologized for the lapse, and Senator Dianne Feinstein said her fears had been confirmed. The Senate Committee's summary of the classified report is expected to be released soon. Christians for Liberty hosted its first event on Saturday at St. Edwards University in Austin. Principal organizer was Dr. Norman Horn, editor and founder of LibertarianChristians.org. Representative David Simpson spoke to a packed room during his keynote address. The theme of the entire event was to demonstrate how libertarianism, because of its basis in nonviolence, known as the non-aggression principle, is the only political philosophy which extends from the moral framework of Christianity. Alexander McCobin, co-founder of Students for Liberty, gave the final speech, making it clear that the Liberty community should support Christians for Liberty, regardless of one's own religious orientation. Brave New Books, Austin source for alternative media the establishment opposes, is now the home of a Bitcoin ATM. Customers can now easily purchase Bitcoin at Brave New Books with an existing wallet. A teller at Brave New Books can also help customers to set up a cold storage paper wallet. The ATM was launched last week and is ready and waiting to meet all crypto needs. Just visit the ATM at Brave New Books, located at 1904 Guadalupe Street in Austin, Texas. You can buy your Bitcoin there today. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. In November, Oregon will become the latest state to vote on labeling genetically engineered foods. Activists gathered over 100,000 signatures to place Initiative 44 on the November 4th ballot. The Oregon Right to Know campaign said they collected 31,000 more signatures than required. If passed, the law would require all food produced with genetically engineered ingredients to include a label on the front or back of packages. The law would go into effect on January 1st of 2016. A coalition of families of 9-11 victims and activists have successfully gathered over 100,000 signatures for the High Rise Safety Initiative surpassing the bar for placing the measure on the November ballot. City Council must now decide if the signatures are satisfactory. The New York City Coalition for Accountability Now, the group behind the petition drive, has said they're prepared to take the battle to court if the City Council does not comply. Mayor Bill de Blasio has previously called the measure inappropriate, very insensitive, and stated that he believes the City Council would not allow the measure on the ballot. If the high-rise safety initiative is approved by voters, it will require the New York City Department of Buildings to investigate high-rise building collapses in New York City that occurred on or any time after September 11th of 2001. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live each Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 4th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. North, an extremely vocal opponent of gay marriage, drew fire during his 2010 re-election campaign for saying that the legalization of gay marriage would lead to man-horse marriages. In one instance, he told the New Haven Register, quote, it's a slippery slope. If we allow two men to marry, what's next? Men marrying horses? 
But yesterday, North found himself at the center of a media firestorm when the New York Times published photos of North on what appears to be romantic outings with a horse. Gathered during the Times' two-month investigation, the pictures show North in almost a dozen locations with the same three-year-old mare. A former aide discovered links to numerous horse-related sites, including phillyfreaks.com and hothindquarters.com on North's work computer. The Times is accusing North of using federal funds to pay for luxurious trips, including a three-night stay at the high-end Sueño Stables in Catalonia, Spain, last month. North released a statement yesterday claiming he only spent time with the horse twice while conducting research for his anti-gay marriage project. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. There's plenty of time for you to call in about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Are Free State Project participants a threat to New Hampshire, or are they part of the New Hampshire tradition? There are two perspectives that we can share with you here. Letters to the editor written to local newspapers across the state. We'll share that with you here because the Free State Project one thing you can't deny is it is having an impact, and people have opinions about it. Unlike the libertarians pretty much everywhere else in the rest of the country. The party. Right, or, or libertarians, period. They just don't have much of an impact anywhere because they're not concentrated, which is, of course, what the Free State Project is about. I it's think about Cop Block is doing some interesting stuff. That's a libertarian. Not necessarily of... libertarian. No, no you they do are not. not libertarian. There's tons well, some of... are not. The yeah, founders it... are of Cop Block, but uh, you, know, you yeah, don't but have to be a libertarian. Cop Block to... is decentralized, so anyone can be a part of it, and it's got liberals, conservatives, and libertarians all, all mixed. Or non-political people yeah, as well. There's right. a lot of people who just don't like the police that are involved with cop block, but may not have ever heard of the ideas of liberty. So keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll get to those letters to the editor here in a moment. We've got Dave on the line in Poughkeepsie to start things out this hour. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. How you doing? What's um, on your mind? Uh, this, this past Saturday, uh, over the weekend, uh, you guys had a show. Talk, it was a topic about name-calling. You guys had some rapper who was talking about like name-calling and blah, blah, blah. If somebody calls Shaquille O'Neal was... Was he was actually kind of making fun, uh, making faces, basically imitating somebody with a, a serious debilitating disorder, is what he was doing. I don't know if he called him a name, but that's basically the well, equivalent. Of he didn't know that that was the case, but that's what ha that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Um, right. Because you know, because people people actually you know make fun of me because of my disorder, and I I can't stand it. You know, because you know they say oh this that blah blah blah. So if somebody makes fun of me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go after them full force. Haven't you Go ever after heard them? How's that working for you? <laughs> it hasn't working. Well, I've it's 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 horrible. It's I don't like it. I don't like the name calling. I don't think you understood I, your I, question, I Mark. Okay, let me try one more time, Mark. Dave. So, um, I you know, Dave, you've been calling in. He's for been calling for months. probably a year. I don't know okay. when Dave started calling, but it seems like it's been a year uh, since we heard from Dave the first time. And he yeah. called about the same issue in the very beginning of when he called Free Talk Live. Was that is he was upset at people making fun of him online. So clearly, it hasn't stopped. Well, yeah, I mean, and the the point I'm trying to make on this is that you know, I, I know for at least a year, and and certainly I've uh, been able to see your videos going back for for years. You've uh, this has been a complaint of yours that somebody will make fun of you um, and for whatever reason and then you know you've you get upset and you're gonna say lots of things to them in order to change their mind and my what I think in fact you have done is quite the opposite you've achieved the opposite of what you mm. are trying to achieve which is opposite? to the, well, the opposite of getting called names um, is not getting called names. You want to not be called names. You are, however, have people on the Internet that actually come to where you are. You'll be in posting in a forum and that kind of thing. They'll figure out you're in that forum. They will come there in order to call you more names. And the reason because they— they get a reaction. Yeah, the reason well, they do I, I that— I plan on stopping that because I, don't, I do not like being called any names. I hear I, you. you know, like well, how are you going to do I'm it? I'm 100% clear, Dave. How are you going to stop it? Well, the, the, hold on, hold on. I know you want to be—I know, I know you don't want to be called names. I'm telling you the best way to not—for uh, people not to call you names is to just ignore morons. 
Well, it's kind of hard, you know? Yeah. Because you know, I, I, they do on Craigslist, and they do on Zello, with Zello is the walkie talkie. Nothing worth doing. Like, you know, very little, Dave, worth doing in life is easy. Yeah, it can be difficult to ignore people when they're heckling you or being very rude, and I can't say I'm the best at it. Like the guy that was laughing at us at the fair booth, I said, hey, what's the inside joke? I, I, I was honestly wondering what he was laughing at, and I would have liked to have gotten the feedback from him. Uh, but, you know, somebody came by later and was very, very rude, and I'm not going to engage with them. I'm not going to uh, waste my time with them, and I'm certainly not going to use violence against them. What is it that you're proposing to do differently, Dave, than you've always done, which is, you know, to continue interacting in these forums, the Craigslist, the Zillow, the wherever it is you hang out. Uh, you continue to uh, to interact with these people. So how are you going to change that? I want to be a well-liked person i want people to understand me i want to have a girlfriend like a normal life just like you guys do i do not want to be made fun of people call me names call me this or that blah 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 i can't stand it so i go after them you know it's they they totally you know piss me off well, but I, that doesn't it, work it, does it, does it dave because you've gone after them for years it may be decades at this point i mean i imagine you're probably somewhere near 30 years old is that about right Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and um, um, like, you probably have been, you know, getting when, when people made fun of you in school, you'd swing back and and make a big deal about it. This has probably been your coping mechanism for thirty years, and what you have failed to see at the, up to this point is that your coping mechanism, in fact, is so flawed it achieves the opposite of what you're hoping to do. Best of luck, Dave. Thanks for the call tonight. Uh, let's go to James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Hello, Mark. James. Hey, Mark. James. I thought it was ironic that you yesterday advised Johnson to pay his registration if Johnson is so worried about driving around his old Fairfield County stomping grounds. Yeah. What are we talking about here? I I think it was I, uh, he had some kind of ticket, outstanding ticket or something from Connecticut for Connecticut. Yeah. It was it had to do with I think his registration. Ironically, the that being because speaking of being made fun of, Mark, while you were away. I called in Free Talk Live to advise somebody uh, to do just the same, and I was called a boat licker, and somebody unitlessly hung up on me and then made more fun of me because oh, I've been called a boot licker multiple times on the show. Ian, go ahead and call no, me a boot licker again. I'm not making. I'm not calling you anything. But I'm just telling you that I get but called the that. Same thing you advised somebody to do that is another co-host of yours. I advised another co-host of yours to do the same thing. And another co-host of yours called me a bootlicker. But I know Ian hasn't got shack attack kind of money, so I won't bother with taking him to court for all the other <laughs> uh, cowardly and unitless things he likes to – because I just want to call in and take issue with you guys about certain things. Just like I won't call – that same person I'm talking about didn't call your views sickening even though you defended the uh, Pentagon attacks because it's a legitimate military target. Uh, even though Ian seems to forget about all the women and children that were murdered – at the Pentagon, uh, by, because you could, you, what you call a legitimate terrorist Dave, attack. Dave, it sounds like you give other people a lot of power over you. Oh, excuse me, James. I'm sorry about that. Derek James, Jay, I, Derek J. Derek, Derek J. I just want somebody speaking of white lies is what I called in about. You don't seem to be affected at all that I just rightfully called your roommate a liar. He's a two face and a coward. Literally. But I just want to talk to Mark about certain issues. But if you want to talk about other issues and just glance aside the fact that. Yeah, what emotion are you feeling right now, you're Dave, roommate, James? You're a roommate. Anger. That's the meme that you guys all <laughs> Have you did. ever considered the idea that you might be addicted Derek to the emotion of anger? Let me, be, let me put it this way, Derek J. You guys, you're one of your high virtues is uh, non aggression. Yes. If you were ever to call me uh, anti gay or anti immigrant, or a that would be accurate. Liquor to my face, like I advised you yesterday, Derek J. You should never pick on somebody smarter than you because they'll make fun of you even. You shouldn't more. pick on anybody. Make you, I'll make I'll make Ian go home and cry if he ever made fun of me in a non-aggressive way. Do you think you're but addicted you to anger? Insult, if you were ever to insult my integrity or my intelligence or my person, all right, Derek J. Do you want to have a conversation, a James? Kid. Because Derek's trying to actually ask I'm you a question. You, you're Ian. just ranting. Ian, why don't you just say I'm sorry for once? For you what? Can't because you're not re you're not really a minister. Either, I'm sorry for what, you? James? You're not a real minister, are you, Ian Freeman or Ian Bernard? You're what do you want minister, an apology for? Oh, See, what I think is happening is James is addicted to anger. Why don't you live anger. up to free talk? 
Derek J for Christ's sakes. Don't lie. It, no, don't lie. It's, don't this is something we've had on conversation. And it has to do with the last call He's as well. Hold. Dave is uh, Dave called in uh, just moments ago. Uh, he was upset. I think he's another person who's addicted to anger. I think yeah. that when well, they people, feed on it. Yeah, well, when people use this, uh, Mark brought it up as a coping mechanism for 30 years. I've it becomes, been wrong. It becomes a default, and yeah. it becomes something that uh, people go to when they don't know what to do. They just become angry, or they become sad, or they feel like they're a target. And I think that's what's happening with James and Dave. All right, we'll come back with more. Uh, I'm going to hang on to James here on this one because I want to know, what does he want an apology for exactly? For me calling him a boot licker? He was probably licking some boots at the time. I don't even remember the incident. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends radio show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, August 1st, 2014, gold opened at 1295.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1342.50, 671.25 for a half ounce, or 335.63 for a quarter ounce. That's 1342.50, 671.25, Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Against my better judgment, I have decided to hang on to James uh, in Arizona (laughs) through the break. He's a a chronic caller who calls uh, uh, not quite nightly, and actually he started calling uh, Peace News Now during your live shows. Yeah, almost every episode at the end. So, of course, Peace News Now airs on Tuesdays and Sundays on LRN.FM, so folks who want to get more Derek J can go and do that. And folks who want more James James, can now listen to uh, Peace News Now. And James is uh, is back with us here in a moment, but I also want to let you know about Pro XPN. They are the sponsor of the phone lines that James is on right now. And it's a global virtual private network that allows your online data to be encrypted, uh, meaning that your internet service provider, the administrator at your workplace, whoever it is that's running the networks that you're connecting through the uh, to the internet through, they won't know what you're doing anymore. Right now, your ISP is probably keeping records for up to five years in some cases about all the websites you're visiting, all the search terms that you're entering. You can stop that from happening by getting ProXPN. Grab their software. It's free over at their website, proxpn.com slash FTL. Get it for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android devices. Even Linux users can use it, though setup's a little bit different there. Use code FTL20, and you'll get 20% off the price of their premium account, which gives you an upgrade to unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can connect to and the ability to privately torrent as well. Plus, ProXPN gets you past regionally blocked websites in most countries. They're... China's a little bit tougher than the average place, but even in China, that you can have success with ProXPN. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL20 to get that discount deal and bring the price down to about 5 bucks a month when you buy the annual plan. There's a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and they do not keep records of your online habits at ProXPN.com slash FTL. As we bring back James uh, in Arizona, James, one of the, the, the difficulties that I have with your calls is you're constantly focused on what has happened to you. That, uh, Like Dave, who, by the way, you don't like. We put you and Dave in New York on the phone line together once. And, can, we stop now? can we stop wasting my time with, about Dave? Well, I just won't waste your time at all, then. Code. Goodbye. 855-450-FREE. <laughs> That's the toll-free number. Uh, you can bring up absolutely anything that you want. What I was going to say is that James is... Uh, The issue I have with James is that uh, when he calls in, he references things that are not immediate. He talks about things that have happened to him in the past where he feels that he's been wronged or perhaps wrongfully accused of having a particular position or having his position misrepresented. And then he jumbles them all together in this sort of stream of consciousness thing where where he just talks about several different things. Uh, Derek, you tried to ask him a question and have a conversation. He just, you know, kept on going yeah, off. Yeah, I want to talk about emotions. You know, where where are his emotions at? I think they help uh, lead us to make decisions. And his, yeah, he was those. clearly angry. And uh, maybe we could get to the root of that and then find the source. And then he could have happiness and But peace. he's loving it. He's enjoying being angry, obviously. He doesn't want to. Well, to, to him, it's not, not a problem, right? It's satisfying in a way. But I don't think he would say he's loving it. You know, there's mm. like people are satisfied or satiated by the the emotion that they're addicted to and it's like scratching a mosquito bite right um, you know it might feel good for a moment but mm-hmm. then it uh, you know it has its uh, its downsides right i think that uh, the james has a lot to say I think he yes, he's actually uh, likely the person calling our back line right now <laughs> oh, in the studio. I think that he would probably be <laughs> best served with his own talk show. Right? Like, I think, wouldn't it be? Yeah, it would be hilarious. I would be happy to sell him low cost podcast ads uh, so that people, because I know there's a built in audience. People on our Facebook page, there's one guy today said, I actually fast forward to hear James's calls. It's so funny. You really can't please uh, everybody, right? Some people complain about James. Like, I hate it when James calls. He's a heel on this show, right? Like, he's the, he's the, when in the wrestling match, the foil, the bad guy, the, the, you know, the guy that comes in with the mask and everybody goes, boo, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, you know, on his own show, he yeah. wouldn't have whatever it, you know, he wouldn't have that other side. Now, I don't I, he doesn't have the sort of built in audience. James doesn't have maybe a couple handful of people that, you know, he knows he's like, listen to me, call in and listen to how horribly they treat me or something like that. Yeah. That might be interesting. But on his own show, he would be then, then the protagonist instead of the antagonist. And I I really think that this guy's just basically because he could this man could monologue for three hours. You know, oh, he yeah. could. James Absolutely. versus the world. <laughs> uh, there you go. I think that he should co-host. Wit versus the world, I think is what he should call let's it. Let's have him co-host with Dave. I, 
I think we should put Dave and James on the I same think show together. I think that you're just being mean, honestly. I mean, I think, I think it'd be hilarious. We should That's give not Dave mean. the telephone number so that he can then call, call James. into James' show. <laughs> but I, well, I like where you're going, at least uh, putting his anger towards something more productive, right? At least if he were producing his own show, other people who are angry could resonate with that. They could enjoy the material, and uh, they could have a little bit of happiness. Well, we do have both Dave and James's phone numbers, so we could put them in touch with one another. I, I, I don't see any reason to, the, to, to do that. No. Making let's, the world a worse place. Let's go to uh, Mike in Saskatoon. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Hi, guys. Hey, I'm kind of responding to that last caller. Uh, he says something about how he feels the need to be liked or he needs people to like him. And this is a problem that I used to have where I felt people had to like me and I had to make them like me and it caused a lot of problems in my life you know it caused me to not be able to be a genuine person mm. and I pretended to be something I wasn't and it caused a lot of problems and you know um, I got arrested about two years ago for a, a crime that is not good uh, it had a victim mm. and it's from something about 10 years ago and I realized s- since then I mean to my family I am Hardly any of my family speak to me, but very few of my friends speak to me now, uh, wow. things like that. And I realize I just can't make people like me anymore. But it's also something I don't need. I don't need them to like me anymore. I had to change where I got my well-being from. I couldn't mm-hmm. get it from the approval of friends and family, because especially now that my secret came out, mm-hmm. I had to totally change how I find happiness through a lot of therapy, you know, and, and help with that. But does that make sense? You yeah. know, I totally agree. I mean, seeking people's approval is one of the worst ways to live um, because if you have to change yourself uh, or if you're trying to masquerade or pretend as though you're someone you're not, if you're looking to build your life around the goals of others and what it is that others are expecting – you become their tool. I mean, you become, you know, this thing that just exists for the for their benefit. And it's okay to want to help people. It's okay to want to, you know, help improve people's lives, offer products and services, yeah. and your your companionship to, in, in, you know, enhance people's lives. Uh, but to do things to uh, to seek their approval, I think, is a really detrimental thing. And and there's a lot of people who do this with their lives. And I think that's one of the reasons why those folks might be uh, very unsatisfied. Because if you're not doing things for yourself if you're not doing what what you know puts you first then you're living for someone else and at that point what's the point of living it, and exactly and and especially during my marriage it became a huge problem because I couldn't connect to my wife in a genuine way because I was always pretending I was always hiding who yeah. I really was and and all those sorts of things and then eventually I left her and all these things but of you course know, you did. She wasn't arrested. married to the person she thought she was married to. And exactly. that's that, exactly. and you also wasted her time with that too, right? Because if she was yeah. looking for a certain person uh with a certain viewpoint or value set or whatever, and you weren't that person, then that's not a good thing either. Yeah, I think this exactly. was a very brave call. I liked it. Mike, I don't know what you did back in the past, but I hope you're not doing it anymore, and I, uh, I wish you the best. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Some of us have to learn the hard way. You know? yeah. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Do what is right for you, and then you will attract to your life the people who appreciate you for you. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. 
The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can call in toll-free to bring up absolutely anything. The number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there completely free. Again, freetalklive.com. You can actually support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. The AMP program, AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's 5 bucks a month. You send it in. You get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only forum podcast, and more. Actually, the new AMP-only uh, Facebook group is relatively popular. That 5 bucks, we take it in and invest it into Free Talk Live using it to do affiliate relations. That means outreaching to radio stations, bringing new stations on board like we just brought on a station in Raleigh, North Carolina tonight. Uh, so we're bringing in new radio stations. We're also doing outreach to the Internet and doing advertising on Google AdWords. We're putting the, sh the signal up on satellite. Uh, every, free to air. every $5 amp gets matched, too. Oh, thank you. We haven't mentioned the matching in a little while. The matching's still going on. Uh, the We're actually pretty close to reaching our goal on the matching, awesome. as a matter of fact. So uh, you can pony up 5 bucks a month, and then our uh, generous matching donors... We'll, uh, we'll match that over at amp.freetalklive.com. And again, it makes a big, big difference for us when you do that. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You know, I've been teasing this all night. We haven't gotten, uh, yes, gotten you have. to I'm, it yet. I'm ready to Sh talk about it. I don't know if we're going to get to um, both of these. So which should we read? The letter from the hater of Free State Project participants, who claims he's not a hater, 
and or the letter from somebody who says free staters the people who've moved to new hampshire as part of this movement the three of us are part of uh, the free state project that free staters as they are called are part of new hampshire's tradition that we're welcome here i'm gonna start with the second one yeah yeah start with the good one all right here this is written to the concord monitor um, and it's regarding Matt Murray's opinion piece titled Don't Fall Into Traps Sent by Free Staters, which was an editorial piece that the Concord Monitor ran back in July on the 19th. And that was about what? Free Staters running as something other than? Right. This was somebody who works for a union uh, organization in New Hampshire who is saying how terrible Free State Project uh, participants are and how they're running for Republican and Democratic seats, and you need to be aware, because if these people get elected, it's going to destroy New Hampshire. They're coming here to take over our state. Says a person who works for a union organization, a state that's right to work. Okay. Yeah. Wants to change. Everybody wants to change state laws, is my point here. Um, and it's a problem because, uh, you know, free staters move to the state for the express purpose, as opposed to moving to the state and then getting involved in their local government. Like, I don't know. I mean, it just seems to be an all an issue of posturing. As any educated New Hampshire native would know, in their advocacy for limited and non intrusive government, Free staters are doing no more than espousing and acting upon the same ideas having to do with freedom and liberty as Josiah Bartlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thornton, John Langdon, John Stark, and so many other New Hampshire Revolutionary War heroes. That in this day and age, Murray, the original author of the critical article, would find these ideas foreign, says says all that needs to be said about America's left and its own plans for New Hampshire's future. Free state advocacy on behalf of individual freedom and liberty is benign in comparison to that of the 400 men who, after having been warned by Paul Revere that the British were coming to seize powder and arms stored at Fort William and Mary in Newcastle, gathered there on December 14, 1774 to capture the fort, remove its military stores, and then hide them throughout the countryside. A bit over a year later, in January 1776, New Hampshire declared its independence from Great Britain six months before the signing of the American Declaration of Independence. New Hampshire has a proud and profound history with regard to advocating and acting on behalf of principles having to do with freedom and liberty. Free staters have embraced our history. We should be happy that they're here because they find New Hampshire still worthy of love and effort. Well, That's New Paul Hampshire, Mursky from Enfield who yeah, wrote that. Yeah. Then- that's awesome. Uh, by the way, I didn't realize it was from Paul Mursky. <laughs> you know who that is? I've yeah, never heard of him. Paul Mursky is involved in the Republican Liberty Caucus, and oh, okay. uh, I think you know, and and also is on the Republican Party's uh, uh, you know board that comes up with the um, executive committee or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever the the party platforms are, people mm, okay. vote on that and vote um, you know yes or no. Uh, you know, I mean. I take what that man says very seriously, but I think he's, uh, he's he's absolutely right. Now, people from the right oftentimes dislike free staters, too, because, you know, they say we're too far left. And, um, you know, people on both sides of the aisle have their agreements and disagreements with the, you know, the ideas of some of the people in the free state project. But I think that he's absolutely right that that the fact is, is that New Hampshire is the freest state um, in the union, if you arguably, well, if you m- match up, uh, I think there's certainly an argument for other states. But at this point, if you match up uh, who's won Merc- or been number one on Mercatus uh, Center's lists, I think it's uh, three out of five times New Hampshire's been number one. It's always been in the top five. It's number four right now, though. Number four, indeed. Uh, but <laughs> one of the states well, that's, that's in the top list. five is also in the most corrupt list of most corrupt governments. So mm. I think that they deserve a little, uh, you know, boot out of the top five for that very fact. You have more access to government in New Hampshire than you do in other states, and this is th- there are so many places for the the people on the right to the left to more. get access to their government and get what they want. More access to government sounds kind of weird. What you mean by that is you can actually talk to the state reps. They're accessible. Um, like I don't want to have a bunch of access to government where I see gov- government everywhere. And in point of fact, New Hampshire is a very low governmental burden. The uh, the ratio of governmental workers or employees to productive people is is lower than I think most every other state. I appreciate this author's sentiment. When I moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, I first lived with a local who had been here all her life. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had no problems with me being a part of the Free State Project or having strong political opinions one way or another. And even said, that's great. That's what this place is for. You know, you'll see more arguments uh, in New Hampshire about politics than any other place. And then we'll go out for coffee. 
because we all get along and yep. we can have disagreements, and uh, this is the place for that. Uh, and New Hampshire, or so. <laughs> and well, and New Hampshire wouldn't even be on my map if it weren't for the freedom aspect here. You know, I, sure, it's cold sometimes, and it ain't uh, Key West, is it, Derek? No, <laughs> and, <laughs> right, yeah, it's it's not got the uh, uh, most of the things that I would look for in a place to settle, like a you know big urban environment, a big gay population. Um, Lots of roads, you know, there's like a lot of mountainous areas here that I'm not for. But hey, it's got freedom. And that's, and that's important to That's you. important. But it's not important to Ed Lake. Ed Lake is uh, the other letter writer here that I wanted to share. And this letter is not so nice. This was written to the Keen Sentinel. It's entitled, I'm a Lover, Not a Hater, by Ed Lake. An open letter to Mr. Swearingen. That's Varen Swearingen, the former president of the Free State Project, who... Uh, it has his own blog called Varen's World, and he's written recently about the uh, the Stop Free Keen group. This is this group of people who've sprung up over the last year to stop a website. What they really want to do is they want to stop activism, they and they pe- believe that freekeen.com sort of is a representation of the activism. They want people to shut up. Yeah. That's what they want. Calling Stop Free Keen. Oh, so he's let open letter to Varen, uh, Free State Project, and Free Keen. Calling Stop Free Keen a hate group is a very misleading statement, says Ed Lake. Now, I have called them haters. In fact, if uh, if you go to haters.freekeen.com, it'll take you straight to their, their Facebook group. And the reason I use that term is because that's the feeling I get when I read their group. I feel a lot of anger. I feel a lot of hatred coming from a lot of the people there. Now, There's maybe nothing the- constructive there. You see, the idea that he's he claiming to be a lover, not a hater— there's nothing constructive that I have seen yet. These people do not want to communicate. Most of them do not. They want nothing to do with constructive uh, criticism. Most of them do not. Again, I'm not calling all of them haters, uh, only the ones that are the loud, angry ones who are the mo- the majority of the group. I mean, the ones who are noticeable. The leaders of the group are not nice people. They have not been friendly. It's not difficult at all to I've, get a hold of the free keen folks if you want to give constructive yeah. criticism. I have yet I've to invited them. The- I said, I'll take, you, I'll take you out to coffee. Let's, let's have a chat. Let's talk about this. What are the concerns? They've got all the times in the world for complaining on Facebook about, oh, yeah. uh, b- about the group. They have no time for coffee. Calling Stop Free Keen a hate group is a very misleading statement, he says. The group as a whole does not promote violence. We are very opposed to having our homes and state that we love and support taken away and forcefully changed to suit their needs by our a group. homes taken yeah. away? We're taking their houses. What? <laughs> how many How many people have, uh, in the city of Keene or the surrounding Cheshire area have had their houses taken away from them by free staters? Oh, by the government? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, we're here to try to help against, uh, stand against the government. But no, this guy's complaining about their houses being taken away. All right. Well, he also doesn't want his state to be taken away. And he comes he back to that no point in a moment. This is Free Talk Live. <laughs> he might work for the state. Who knows? We don't know anything about him. It's Free Talk He's Live. Not king. More of his letter coming up next. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. 
Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Yes, the haters, they are going to hate. At least if you do things that are worth hating, uh, that are worth having an opinion about. And that's something that we do very well here in New Hampshire, uh, especially in the Keene area. Mm -hmm. We do things. And when you do things, whatever those things are, there are going to be people who are upset uh, by them. For instance, even people within our own movement. Uh, a lot oh, of times yeah. the activism that we do here, in, 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 again, check out freestateproject.org and come join us if you love freedom. But a lot of the times the things we do here are controversial. I actually had um, a guy who was from New York, come up to the fair outreach booth that I was doing this weekend. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he said he works for John Stossel. He's one of John Stossel's producers cool. or writers or something like that. And I said, well, have you seen this movie? Or he actually, I, th I don't think I even asked him. I think he pointed out your movie, Derek J. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which you can watch for free at victimlesscrimespree.com. He gave me some unsolicited feedback about the movie because he works in the business, right? Like he's, he's a movie guy or, you know, works in television. Yeah. And so he said that uh, he thought the movie did not do good things for freedom, and he specifically cited the crossing guard scene, which of course is wow. you know one of the most controversial things apparently that we've ever filmed. Which uh, takes about less than a minute of the movie. Yeah, yeah, maybe a minute or two. And uh, the crossing guard scene involves an old lady who uh, you said hello to while mm -hmm. you were recording some B-roll. How dare I say outs, hello to outs, a, a woman? You're in public on a public sidewalk, yeah. and she turns around and yells, No! And hits you with the so stop sign that she was holding in her hands. Yes. And then the rest of the video is us kind of asking her, hey, you know, saying things like, that's not very nice. You shouldn't be doing that. You're a public servant. You're not supposed to behave that way, trying to hold her accountable right. for what she did. But she's too old to be held accountable, Ian. People hate that video. So anyway, he gave me that feedback. And so I told him, well, look, I appreciate where you're coming from. First of all, you're wrong. Well, uh, the first he... thing I think is most important to lay out to somebody who has a problem with that is that Derek J was trying to video B-roll. I he laid was, it out for him. Like, this is really important. Look, all I was trying to do was get some video of some kids being helped across the street by a crossing guard yeah, uh -huh. to use in a, to, to use as B-roll. This was not me trying to do some kind of activism against yeah. school crossing guards, this woman, I explained or that anything. To him. I explained that yeah. to him, and he thought that we were just haranguing this woman just for the hell of it. She hit somebody with 
the stop right. sign. I explained that, that to him. She didn't get harangued I know. until the stop Mark, sign striking. I, I know. I explained that to him, and I pointed out to him, look, he said hello to her. That was the first thing that happened. And he said, well, that's not what I saw. And I said to him. Uh, then you saw something entirely right. I said, different. please watch it again, because yeah, that's what do. happened. Anyway, I, just you know, as an example, I told him my perspective on this is it did do good things for freedom, because there are people who've come to New Hampshire who've specifically told you and I, Derek yes. Jay, that that movie, Victimless Crime Spree, was their a sort of moment of truth, the sort of uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, their uh, the, the the motivating factor for them to make the move. Other people have said it was the first thing they ever heard about the movement in New Hampshire, and then something else kind of closed the deal later. So it was either their introduction to what's happening here, or the close the deal closer. It seems like, and so from my perspective, the movie's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's attracting the right kind of people here, and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier of approval seeking. I'm not here to seek people's approval. Right. I'm here to do thing. I'm here to do activism. And when you do activism, no matter what it is, as soon as it becomes effective, even if it's just politics running for office. Yes. As soon as as a politician, if you propose repealing some l- beloved government program, those people are going to come out in the streets and uh, and oppose you with virulent lies and all kinds of misinformation. So anyway, back to the letter to the editor here from Ed Lake, one of the members of the Stop Free Keen Facebook group. He claims he's not a hater. He says, yes, many of us hate this invasion by outsiders. And he puts hate in quotes. But it doesn't make us a hate group. There may have been individual group members who may have said hateful things or seemed to promote using something that may be considered hateful or violent to rid us of free keen, but it should not represent us as a whole. In fact, many members of the Free State Project use that same explanation about Free Keen. Many have said the Free State Project as a whole does not approve of or support Free Keen's tactics against us natives. By the way, just to be clear, I know I always have to keep making this clarification, Free Keen doesn't have tactics. It's a website. If it has a tactic, it's to put posts online so you can read them. Free Keen is a place where you can see what's happening in the activism movement, and there's a wide variety of tactics within that activism movement. Mm -hmm. And we do our best at Free Keen to report on as much of it as possible. Anyway, going on here. But they use Free Keen as a sort of group to put us all in the same group together. Um, But he's right about the point that everybody's individuals, right? Like we should judge people based on individually what it is that they say. And there are a lot of people who express a lot of hate within the Stop Free Keen group. Going on. He says the tactics against us natives, as the two groups have labeled us, the citizens of the state of New Hampshire, and that uh, Free Keen's hostile invasion of our home should not be lumped in with the Free State Project as a whole. How in the world can you expect citizens of New Hampshire to willingly accept a group of outsiders moving into our state, not to enjoy and love it for what we have built, but to tell us we are freedom haters, slaves to a state, and how we have made a state that is so wrong in your opinions? Your well, group- no one says that. Um, okay, so you know, maybe some maybe some people do say that. But Adamo state- uses the term slaves to describe people. The Free State Project doesn't say that. So this is the the point that I'm trying to make is is that he he's making the claim that the Free State Project says that it doesn't. The Free State Project is a pro- project where people can move to New Hampshire in order to work for more liberty. He's not saying the liberty. Free State Project has said that. He's talking about the some of the members from which he has received, uh, you know, he's seen messages about slaves. I've seen Adamo Freeman posting about how people are slaves if they're kind of still stuck yes, inside the system. Yes, but he's saying that how can we um, separate Free State Project from that? Uh, I don't understand where you're. Where Read you're the talking. sentence. I don't know which sentence. Start you're at beginning about. of the sentence you were just on. How can the expect uh, New Hampshire to accept a group of outsiders uh, telling us we're freedom haters, slaves to a state, and how we've made a state that's so wrong in your opinions? And there are people who are upset and about the, the the state, but I think one of the confusions that Ed has here is that I think he's confusing the ground, the mountains, the sky, you know, the place where we live, which is a very beautiful place and filled with wonderful people. With the state, which is, you know, a group right. of criminals. Yes, that's probably the difference. That he's uh, not he's not making that distinction. Right. Well, he doesn't think there is a distinction. He believes the government of well, New Hampshire well, is wait, the people of New Hampshire. I don't know what he well, believes because I haven't asked him that. But everybody knows that states always change borders, they, that they weren't uh, originally the way they were formed, and countries do this too. So he, he must recognize that it's not the land. Let me keep going here, guys. Your group may have converted a very small few state residents to your takeover, but I'm very safe in saying it's nowhere near a large enough percentage to matter. 
I read about and learned about the Free State Project many years ago, and nothing about it interested me. I came to the conclusion it would fail, and it wasn't worth my time thinking about. Guess you're wrong about that, buddy. This utopia you people describe as an impossible dream that will always fail if we ever really want to have— You and your impossible dreams! Is he just asserting this? Or... If, yes, yes, if we really want to have a peaceful and civilized society. But after dealing with the hostile, entitled, lazy, tax-dodging, and anti-community members of Free Keen directly in my home— then you must add the whole idea. It's like it's like we're Girl Scouts and we've run off and knocked at his door. Then you must add the whole idea of them and the Free State Project talking about succeeding, he means seceding, from our great nation. I can no longer ignore Free Keen or the Free State Project. I consider most of you no different than invading terrorists or some type of cult. Wow. I, he absolutely believes that. There are lots of people that believe that. The fact is, is if you're advocating for smaller more accountable government, there will always be people that do want the government accountable to them and want it to be larger. I never understood until recently why the Free State Project didn't just buy an island or thousands there of acres no islands. of uninhabited land somewhere where they would have where they would not have to take a way of life away from happy citizens okay. and then attempt to build their of- hold on and then attempt to build their utopia. But as I have concluded, they need our infrastructure that was built with the sweat and tax dollars of others. And that is why I truly believe they need to try to take our state away from us. Their utopia would have no roads, bridges, power grid, public water and sewer, schools, parks and all the other things they want to take from us. The natives of this state. Have I come to hate the ideas of Free Keen and the Free State Project? Yes. Does that make me a hater? I don't think so. In (laughs) fact, I'm a lover. I love my state. And I do not wish to see some outside force take it away from me, my family or my neighbors. Ed Lake from Ashwela. When I hear someone say, I love my state, it literally sounds to me like someone saying, I love my chains. Yeah, I love my government. But does that, is that what he means when I don't he, think he says does. the state? No. He, he's one of those, you didn't build that kind of thing. You remember when Barack Obama got all the trouble for saying, you didn't build that? Um, that's saying that, you know, that we stand on the, the shoulders of generations in the past. I think that that's absolutely true. But the fact that... You know, the the government has claimed for itself a monopoly in so many areas doesn't mean that we couldn't have succeeded without a monopoly in those areas. I would be happy to move. Please tell me where this unoccupied island is that has no governmental influence, that I can go and start my utopia from the dirt up. On the moon. Please let me know. I'll move there. So there you go. You're going to upset people when you make an impact. And there's no denying the Free State Project is controversial and making an impact. If you want to have that impact, go to freestateproject.org. Join us up here. You can't do activism successfully without rocking the boat. You just can't do it. See you tomorrow. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips, tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 4th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,291 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $585. Antiwar.com reports, What is vote fraud? In Afghanistan, the answer isn't so easy. And two weeks after candidate Ashraf Ghani walked out on the audit, complaining they were throwing out too many ballots, rival Abdullah Abdullah is now doing the same, claiming they aren't throwing out enough. Corruption in Afghanistan is ubiquitous to the point of absurdity. And months after the runoff vote, it seems impossible that a satisfying result will come out while the U.S. is trying to satisfy both candidates with the power sharing deal. Abdullah had previously released audio evidence of the election commission stuffing the ballot boxes in favor of Ghani and yesterday issued another round of recordings, including the vice president ordering vote rigging in Ghani's favor. All of that looms large after the election commission reported Ghani beat Abdullah by a significant margin, despite Abdullah being the overwhelming front runner going into the runoff election. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The AP reports, for months, CIA Director John Brennan stood firm in his insistence that the CIA had little to be ashamed of after searching the computers of the Senate Intelligence Committee. His defiant posture quickly collapsed after a devastating report by his own Inspector General cited against the CIA on each key point of the dispute with the Senate. According to an unclassified summary of the report released on Thursday, five agency employees, two lawyers and three computer specialists improperly accessed Intelligence Committee computers earlier this year during a disagreement over interrogation documents. Then, despite Brennan ordering a halt to the operation, the CIA's Office of Security began an unauthorized investigation that led it to review the emails of Senate staffers and search them for keywords. After Senate leaders learned about the intrusion in January and protested, the CIA made a criminal referral to the Justice Department alleging improper behavior by the Senate staffers. That referral, CIA Inspector General David Buckley found, was based on inaccurate information and was not justified. When internal investigators interviewed three CIA specialists, they exhibited a lack of candor according to the Inspector General's report. Those devastating internal conclusions prompted Brennan to abandon his defensive posture and apologize to Intelligence Committee leaders. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports Israel continues its war in Gaza and continues to hammer refugee centers at an alarming rate, hitting the seventh UN-run school of the current war with a drone strike yesterday morning. The drone strike landed in the street immediately in front of the school gates, killing 10 civilians and wounding dozens of others, including children who were clustered around the gate playing. It was, as mentioned, the seventh school hit so far in the war and the third in the past 10 days. The UN has been using the schools as shelters for refugees and gave the Israeli military the exact coordinates in theory to avoid them being mistakenly targeted. Instead, the attacks are becoming so common that Israeli military claims of accidental strikes are no longer credible and while Israeli politicians